right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Frober. Today, my guest, Canadian rock band Stars Unhinged, is on the podcast. How are you guys doing today? Great, Jason. Uh, dude, it's great to have all you guys right. here, man. I uh, I really appreciate you getting on Skype and uh, working out all the bugs so we can do this. Uh, we got uh, you guys have a new album coming out, right? It's called Rise. We do. Nice. You want to tell me about that? You guys had uh, doing a bunch of recording in different cities, I believe, right? Yeah, it's it's been interesting. You know, the Rona, COVID times. What can you do? But uh, we're spread out across Canada, even between the three of us right here. So a lot of the initial tracking, uh, we were we were it was basically done at, at at my house, I guess. Most of the initial tracking, and uh, that's when we actually all got together. But now it's uh, yeah everyone's got their own little home studios. We try to get together, work out on parts, and then uh, everyone go do some tracks and send them in. <laughs> That's awesome. I think you were saying earlier that uh, we have uh, Mike Federici, your guitar player, is actually recording right now, doing some guitar parts. Yes, he is. That's right. That's awesome. Me and uh, Mike and JB got together last night and. Uh, <laughs> This is the thing about the COVID times. We're actually working on album number two right now, and album one hasn't been released oh, yet. God. <laughs> That's yeah, good. which is which is it's a good place to be actually. It's not too bad a place mm -hmm. to be. And we worked out a bunch of stuff last night, and um, and. Uh, well, that's where Mike is today. He goes, I'm gonna put this stuff together, and he's he's working in his studio. Oh, that's cool. But we still we still get together to try to you know work out the parts. Mm -hmm. It's not the same hearing. Nah, that part sucks online. It's it's nicer in person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be able to look the person in the face and tell them you don't like what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you guys using to uh, record your stuff with? You running Pro Tools, Logic? Uh, we're running Logic. Logic. A lot of people yeah. have been going to Logic these days. You know, I've yeah. I've been in so many kind of different Pro Tools studios. And uh, that's initially I was going to go to Pro Tools because of all the different uh, producers and stuff that I've worked with. Uh, they all said Pro Tools is the way to go. And then they said, oh, no, they're subscription based now. I don't know if you want to get tied into that. And I was like, uh, no, because I might not be, you know, really, it might be a fad. Maybe I'll like it for, you know, three weeks and then that's over. So, yeah, I really love Logic. I think it's great. It works out just fine. And we're all on Logic. All of us right now, so it's great. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and then you're running, uh, you're all running Max too as well. So it's uh, pretty seamless yep. when you're running Logic, right? That's a Mac proprietary yeah. system. Mm -hmm. But that's the other problem with uh, Pro Tools is that you have to uh, have a lot of proprietary hardware as well as the software. And then, right, the uh, the plugins now are also on a subscription base. So now it just starts adding up super fast the cost of what you're paying a month just to record in your house. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. But and also, um, I mean, we recorded it here in Vancouver, and uh, uh, we sent it out to uh, uh, a good friend, Doug Fury, who makes a bunch of really great, you know, bands from Vancouver, and we sent it out to him, who's uh, in the East Coast in Toronto, also. So we sent it out to him to mix it, and then sent it to. Uh, I think it's uh, Alberta or uh, is it, uh, Jamie Sitar is either in Alberta or Sisu, Manitoba. I'm not too sure. But it's basically three different provinces this album has been kind of done over. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty. And, cool and a lot of Frank's bass tracks were done in Vegas before right. he went to Toronto. <laughs> oh, really, Frank? Uh, what, right. what, what studio are you yeah. recording out here in Vegas? Oh, I was at, uh, at, at the house, at the Casa. At, at, actually, it was in oh. Vinnie Paul's house. Oh, right. So that's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I was fortunate enough to uh, to get to visit Vinnie Paul's house on occasion when I ever was alive out here, man. And it was a fun time, man. Crazy parties, uh, beautiful pool. It was always pool. a great time. I miss the barbecues and the, the, the great hang it always was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, it's uh, being a football Sunday, I used to get the... Uh, the pictures from Frankie and just seeing the silver trays just loaded up, everybody ready to go, everyone ready to dive into a big feast. Yeah, he you would know, cook like, their jerseys. He would cook big meals for everybody, right? He's always he cook, he's always he cooking for everybody. Cook for a hundred people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that guy. I uh, missed those short ribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. 
Yeah, I got to hang out with his brother in uh, San Francisco uh, a couple of times. They were doing the damage plan tours driving through there, man. His brother was also an amazing great. guy. Amazing guy. He, he would buy everybody in the bar shots. He would just walk around with the big waiter, waiter ta- uh, tray and handing out Crown Royal to everybody, people he doesn't, he doesn't know any of these people, but he doesn't care. Everybody's partying with him. And I think wow. Vinny really embodied that as well. Uh, every time I saw Vinny, he was always having a good fucking time, man. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, we were uh, we were uh, we were lucky enough to uh, have some of the early stages of some of these tracks. Um, he he did actually get to have a listen, and uh, was pretty pretty excited about the direction of where we were heading with uh, with everything and the way it's you know ultimately turning out. It's uh, it was kind of nice to have his blessing on it as well as we were, you know, just kind of figuring ourselves out in the early stages. Oh, that's so, awesome. That was nice. Yeah, and he was very. Proud of yeah, man, it's a it's it's a fantastic sounding uh, album, man. I I listened to you guys have the new music video that you just put out. Yeah, that's right. And that was uh, again, that was an interesting kind of uh, Rona <laughs> situation there. Again, knowing that uh, everybody's kind of in different cities, and we kind of had to to be socially distanced in order to to get this done. Um, we just kind of came up with a, a concept and shot it in a way that we were able to kind of put it together and not even being in the same city. Um, and, uh, I think it turned out pretty great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Frank was telling me that, uh, you did all the video editing on this JB. Uh, that's right. Yeah. There's, uh, it was kind of a, my first kick at the can using uh, final cut, just seeing what I could come up with. And, uh, again, I sort of had the concept, you know, we, we'd kind of discussed, the idea of the look that we kind of wanted to go for. And, and then it was just up to me to sit down and figure it out and, and play with it. I mean, again, another, uh, I guess the silver lining to, to COVID times, having the time to be at home to just, you know, sit down and, and start figuring this kind of thing out. Um, it just, uh, you know, it was, it was a bit of a, you know, a learning experience as well as a, as a joy to put it together. That's awesome, man. If you guys uh, if you guys are into it, I'd love to play a little bit of that on the uh, separate computer over here. Awesome. Absolutely. Give people a taste of what they're in for. The new album, Rise. This is Fall in Line. or whatever and get a good taste of it so, uh, right on that's awesome that's fantastic for your first video man that came out amazing i was uh I was telling frank on uh, messenger man that's just super pro you did a great job of that yeah thank you very much it was uh like i said it was it was interesting to to be learning at the same time as putting it together but uh but yeah i think it i think it turned out great it really it it was also interesting to be kind of editing um as much sort of musically as it was visually, you know, just the pace of it kind of had to be, you know, on point with, with the pace of the song. And I think that was kind of what uh, helped kind of guide me. It was kind of my, how I kind of set the timeline of the, of the footage and everything that was going into it was, was really kind of based on the pace of the song. And so 
kind of coming at it from two angles visually and and uh, sonically it was kind of how that came together right because when you're uh when you're editing those music videos together man it's like everything has to come down on that snare beat all the time and make sure your clips yeah. are timed with uh with the song itself so it's a little a little bit of yeah. a fun process it helps you along the way you know where you're mm -hmm. you know where you're going for when you're doing that yeah yeah no exactly and again it's just it was sort of a, again it sort of it came out of necessity a little bit i mean it was a little it was not super easy to to find somebody who could come out and and shoot a video and, and all that given the circumstances with with lockdowns and whatnot so um just taking it upon ourselves to do it um i mean it's it, it is kind of a, an interesting, you know, tool to have in our back pocket too, to know that we can do something like this uh, if we need to. I mean, we, you know, in the future, we definitely want to do more sort of concept videos and, and work with other artists and, and to put things like that together. But to know that we have this as an option as well is, is always nice to have. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at your guys' website right now. Did you guys do your website as well or did you have someone design that for you? No, that that was me in my in my 3 a.m. How do I get something up there? Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess the big problem too is that we're we're hiring a web person, uh, somebody to do a bit of everything. The only problem now is that all our photos are either clipped together little Photoshop deals or picture of three of us because Frankie's on the on the opposite coast from us. Oh. So we figure we're, we're going to redo everything, but we thought, well, maybe let's get a full band photo shoot before we do that. So we kind of see everything as kind of placeholders at the moment, but it always you know, is, you right? do what you do. Mm -hmm. You got to get it out there. You know, it's uh, one of the things about modern business strategies with the internet and everything being so instant access. It's like uh if you're not disappointed with your initial product, you didn't release it soon enough. That's one of the things I've always read. You know, just put it out there, change yeah. it later. It's like, make sure it works, you know. That's definitely how we every, ended up doing this podcast. Everything that we've been talking about, um, new singles, new videos, new photo shoots, new everything we do, we realize that the three of us are here and Frankie's over here. We want to get everything done together, but it's just the time that you can't do it. So every day that you waste is you know it's you're you're not doing yourself any favors get it out don't worry about it we can update the spotify page we can update this we can you know we don't care about you know this video there's only you know uh two of us aren't in the video at the same time <laughs> you know, not only because frank he's on the other coast but a lot of times while i was doing my part it's JB holding the camera on the other side. You know what I mean? It's the times. It's 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 how it just has to be done now. Oh yeah. And the same token that it was such a fun experience to do the video this way. Now we tell JB, wow, that was really great. You edited. It looks fabulous. Hey man, let's do another one. He's like, fuck you guys. We're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. Well, <laughs> editing editing is hours and hours and hours. And like the one the one thing I will say though that. Uh, that was a positive that came out of it is despite having heard this song like 6,000 times now, uh, I still like it. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's a, that's a positive. So, yeah. It's a good driving uh, for, song. It's got a solid guitar riff, man. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. And we have some magical cowbell in it, right? So <laughs> yeah, the cowbell. we're bringing the magical cowbell back to heavy music. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. You can never get enough cowbell, man. That's for sure. <laughs> Tommy Lee and Alex Van Halen, they know what it's all about. <laughs> right? You're a big uh, Van Halen fan yourself, Chico, right? We were talking a little bit about that uh, before we push record. That's, that's, that is what started it for me. Like, I did, my first concert was the Kiss concert, and so I freaked out, obviously, I was really young. And, uh, but the first time, I think, I didn't actually even hear Van Halen 1. I think it was Van Halen 2 was the very first Van Halen I've ever heard. And I was like, geez, you know, I, I really like this. And then I heard the next album. And then I, I went back to Van Halen 1, you know. I was probably in, fair warning was probably out by the time that I probably heard the first <laughs> one. Because I was so locked into, you know, Women and Children of Fair Warning and Van Halen 2. Oh, that was a great record, man. That was a great oh, record. I love them. But you're a Van Hager fan, and I love that also. Yeah, I was, I was telling you, I, my uh, my 
only time I got to see Van Halen in concert was 2004. It was uh, the Van Hagar experience, man. We, they still have Michael Anthony, though, which is amazing for me. Okay. And that's pretty, uh, yeah, that's they awesome. put on a fantastic show. Fantastic show. I mean, Sammy Hagar is a phenomenal singer and musician. And I like when they, they get to do the entire catalog as opposed to just doing yes. the David Lee Ross stuff, you know, because I like a lot of those songs. Absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love them both for uh, totally different sides. Oh, but yeah. right now, I, yeah, I'll, I'll go to Spotify or something, and I'll put on, I won't put on a Van Halen album. I'll always put on This Is Van Halen or the Van Halen radio because I want to hear a little bit of everything. Right. Yeah. yeah and I Have you seen uh, Sammy with uh, Chicken Foot? Did you see that? I haven't seen Chicken Foot. I definitely want to, man. They're amazing. Yeah, was, I saw the first uh, tour at a little place called the Commodore Ballroom oh, here yeah. in Vancouver. And, uh, Michael Anthony, and that was the first one where Satriani and Chad Smith was still, all of them, and it was, I freaked out. Like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Sammy it's a hell was, of a super group, man. Yeah. That's a great venue to see them, too. And you say a little venue, but it's, it's a world-famous Commodore Ballroom. It's, uh, yeah. it's a pretty legendary venue we have here in Vancouver. Pretty much anybody who's anybody has played there. A thousand-seater. Like, yeah. a thousand-seat old school venue where the floor used to bounce in the middle kiss played there back in dress yeah. to kill or something era like johnny cash played there back in the day like oh. you know it's just one of those places probably one of the best shows i've ever seen was uh was there it was uh slash when he did his first um first tour cycle with his first solo record so it was kind of before they were called the conspirators but it was it was that lineup of guys and uh and that that show in that size of venue, I mean, literally being, you know, six feet away from Slash, you know, shredding solos and stuff was just absolutely incredible. Amazing. Yeah, and the sound in that venue is just unmatched. I hope it doesn't close down because of the COVID. hope they can keep yeah. it open. Yeah, I think, keep it open. <clears throat> yeah, I think we've lost a few good base. rooms here in Toronto. We've lost the Orbit Room and some other clubs just won't uh, come back, unfortunately, from from this. So, very sad. It is, man. It's uh, it's one of those things. It's really hard to keep those clubs open, even when you're running at full speed. You know, and, and exactly. a, a lot of clubs clubs can get taken down just by booking like one national <laughs> act and paying their guarantee out, and then they don't sell any tickets to that show, and now they're out five to eight thousand dollars, say, and or even more if it's a yeah. larger venue. And you know that that's that's enough to almost take a club down. You know, you do one or two of those bad shows, and and I've just seen so many go by the wayside because of that. And now with COVID, it's it's going to be a whole different uh, environment out there for touring mm -hmm. acts when we can tour again. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's it's actually really sad. I wonder about a lot of those places in Vegas. Like, I like vamped. I love going to vamped. That was a fantastic rock bar. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Vamped has a has a bit more money behind it than some of the others. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, like, let's hope that it can you know stay afloat. Cause what a great place for concerts. Well, right now, uh, my buddy Donnie, who is on the uh, podcast, Donnie Dechecko, he uh, he's running Vamped right now, and uh, they've been opened back up doing uh, food service, doing like bar and food service. I know. Awesome. Like, you know, yeah. still can't do live entertainment, but um, hopefully, it's enough to you know help help pay for the overhead and keep things afloat. But I, yeah. I'm pretty sure Danny Coker's not going to let that thing go at the wayside, man. You know. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, he, he loves that. <laughs> I don't place. think he's going to start a GoFundMe yeah. also to keep it uh, keep the doors open there. Right. Well, actually, yeah. hey, I would. That's a GoFundMe. I would send money to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see some yeah. great artists down there. You know. Yeah. Uh, I've got uh, I got a pretty funny story about Danny. Actually, I got I had the chance to open for uh, Count Seventy Seven up here. I was uh, playing with a with a different act, and they. Uh, they came through and we got to open up for them and uh, and then hang out after the show and he introduced me to snorting whiskey. Oh god. <laughs> that, that was uh, that was an interesting experience that uh, <laughs> kind of became an interesting party trick for uh, for a few weekends after that with my with my friends who hadn't experienced that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a, they were they were a great bunch of guys that uh, the Count 77 group they uh, definitely brought the Vegas up to Vancouver, that's for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I used to, uh, we used to do the the snorting vodka thing back in uh, in high school, man. That shit made me hallucinate. 
<laughs> yeah, it fucks you up, dude. Yeah, it's a different thing. It really is. Like you get this kind of because you don't process it the same way. So like, you kind of get this full body drunk buzz thing going on. It's pretty. It's a pretty wild time. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay, guys, gotta go. You're right. For people listening, if you're gonna fuck I'll around with that, right you shouldn't. Hey, I'm not. I don't yeah, want to yeah. condone that. Is, but uh, if you're gonna, you know, make yeah. sure to do just a very little amount. You know, don't drown yourself because you yeah. will fuck yourself all up. It's like <laughs> yeah. the very bottom of a shot. Don't try this at home. Disclaimer. Don't try it at home, man. Yeah. You know, we've, that's, we've done it for you. We've done it for you. It's dumb. Don't do it. It'll hurt you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember seeing, uh, we were hanging out at the park after snorting a bunch of vodka and watching this chick, I was probably on some other stuff too, (laughs) walk through in front of us, disappear across the park, and then can start again from the opposite side of the park walking through. (laughs) And I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? That is the most peculiar thing. You guys seeing this? Yeah. (laughs) Fucking fun though. Yeah, that would be it for me. I'm like, nope, that's it. I'm yeah, not gonna, I'm quite drinking kombucha or some shit. I'd move on to it. <laughs> <laughs> I just got some, you know, vodka infused kombucha in my fridge. I haven't tried it yet, but anyway. yeah. <laughs> let's take a health drink and fuck it up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I actually heard uh, just recently, I guess uh, they they passed uh, in Oregon that cocaine, heroin, psychedelics everything's legal in oregon right now kind of experiment i heard that or i think it's a decriminalized so they decriminalize it so basically you're not going to get um you know necessarily arrested or prosecuted for for small amounts of it which you know i guess is uh you know it's kind of a hot button topic for a lot of people but um you know for some there's some places where they have done i think was i want to say portugal but i you'd have to check me on that i can't remember but there, there's been places where they have tried it, and it seems to, uh, it does seem to help. Uh, um, mm. You know, I guess they they tend to put more of a focus on, uh, like treating addictions and stuff like that, as opposed to, you know, criminalizing it. Yeah. Um, but but uh, try yeah, that it's in Vancouver on Hastings Street. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's I mean yeah. it, it's not technically a decriminalized thing, but it's it's definitely they. It's almost a similar situation. It's, it is kind of a, you know, they look past use, personal use of it, and they, they tend to try to give help. I mean, we have, like, essentially, you know, safe injection sites and things like that here uh, that sort of, you know, try to deter people from, you know, using dirty drugs and sharing needles and things like that that results in a lot more death. So... Again, like I said, it's a hot button topic. People have a lot of a different opinions on how that goes, but uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see, you know, see somewhere like Oregon kind of taking a chance at that. Yeah, they worked well with the marijuana, right? It's, uh, yeah. I mean, you don't see a, a rise in crime rate or anything. You know, you see a rise in, in capital being gained by the state whenever they, uh, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they start taxing the marijuana sales and. Uh, I think I think people have a lot better things to be doing with uh, police hours and time than arresting people for getting high, honestly. Yeah. And those people. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, you know, so many people are in prison uh, for just trying to have a good time, and it's really, mm-hmm. it's really a shame. Not that it's like yeah. the best thing to be addicted to drugs, but that's a whole different, different concept from being thrown in prison for enjoying yourself. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. That misdemeanor drug use or whatever is like, you know, yeah. filling prisons with people for that is a bit ludicrous. But, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, like I said, it's it's one of those things you kind of just have to to wait it out a little bit. It's kind of a a trial and error type situation. I think you you know, course correct as you need. But uh, be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, it will, man. I uh, I'm sure there's. With uh, the heavier drugs that aren't marijuana and stuff like that, you know, like heroin and cocaine, they might start causing a little bit of an issue with addiction tendencies and, and people getting a little out of control. Maybe the, I don't know, you see what happened in, uh, what, San Francisco with needles and shit being all over the streets. And it's like hopefully yeah. they can contain that from becoming a ridiculous, reckless, uh, abandoned kind of situation. But I think it's a step mm-hmm. in the right direction personally. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Stop punishing people for, you know, life choices that aren't hurting other people 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to me like it's going to be like a, a celebrating drug situation. It's not like, hey, everybody, now now's your chance. Go out and do it. It's just, it's just yeah. sort of saying, like, you know, you're not necessarily going to end up in prison for 15 years if you get caught with, you know, a personal amount of narcotics. So Yeah, I think it's beautiful, man. Yeah. I think it's one of those steps in the right direction. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's sort of... <laughs> Again, one of those sort of hot button topics, and it's kind of you know again, just to sort of bring it back to to the music stuff. I mean, it's kind of one of those things that that's sort of what even Fall in Line is a little bit about. Is it's you know one of these situations of like let's let's talk about these things, let's figure out a solution. You know, let's let's figure out, let's meet in the middle, let's let's talk and and figure out how we can you know move forward, whether you agree on something or not. You know, that's it's all right to have. A difference of opinion on things and, and have a different view uh, as long as we can get together as adults and talk about it and, and, and figure out a way to uh, to find some compromise um, that's kind of you know the sentiment and uh, and I think that's you know this is a great opportunity for a state to kind of pave the way for something like that so it's funny yeah. we wrote this song a long time ago and it, it, everything seems to be lining up to what's happening this whole summer it does, yeah. doesn't it? The song is really like weird. Two years older, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think but, if the uh, if the footage in the in the video shows you anything, I mean, there, there's there's definitely themes that seem to be pretty uh, constant throughout history. It's you know, I think we're we'll we'll constantly have as, as long as people have you know freedom and choice and and opinions, you know, there's always going to be some level of conflict and. And that's not necessarily always a bad thing. I mean, it's it's okay to to disagree and to you know have to figure out a way to meet in the middle somewhere. You yeah. know, to as the as the lyric goes, to bridge the great divide. So, right. If everyone was just on the same page, thinking the same thing, I mean, it'd be a pretty boring ass world, right? Like there'd be no exactly no flavors. It's like uh, I I like to equate it to uh, ice cream, right? Like if, just because I like vanilla doesn't mean that everybody should eat vanilla ice cream at all times, right? Like that would be... And you're, a, an, idiot, and you're an idiot if you don't. Yeah, yeah. you're an idiot yeah. and I hate you and we're not friends anymore and, you know, because you don't eat vanilla ice cream and it's just like, damn, dog, like there's yeah. there's all kinds of uh, options out there and maybe you're not going to want that forever either, you know? And, yeah. and uh, You should see the look on people's faces when I try to get them to drink the beers that I drink. Yeah. <laughs> what are you drinking right now? Some sort of heat, a sour. I've got a, uh, a Strathcona Beach Rattler. Man, that's so, a mouthful. Right. Yeah. So it's just a, a nice light. Uh, what do they say here? Uh, it's a precise blend of fresh lemon and raspberry juice with beer. Oh. I realize refreshing. that's not a. Uh, that, it's probably not a popular choice with a lot of people. <laughs> it's like get that fruit out of my beer, but I like it. Uh, it's like the uh, good old Bartles and James or something like that, right? I used to love yeah, those. That's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, no, we, just... all, we all got together, um, me and Mike and JB, and we had some hazy IPAs and sushi last night. Oh, yeah. nice. So we got some, quite a, you know, a few beers. What was that? Uh, what was that? That oatmeal fudge stout or whatever there, we had? There's a, there's a great craft in Vancouver called Twin Sales. And Twin Sales makes just the wickedest stuff, like great stuff. But they had one. It was a oatmeal fudge. Stout, oh, stout with sea, sea salt. salt. That's right. Oh, you know, chocolate fudge, whatever, sea salt stout. And uh, yeah, the, between the three of us, we, you know, we took a third of them, and we're like, man, this is this is actually really good. This is good. I'm good right there. That's the, you know. I, 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 I would have finished one. I would have finished one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. it. It definitely was really good. But I feel when uh, when it gets a bit colder, you know, when winter starts coming, that's when you want these nice dark beers mm-hmm. yeah. jb you got the memo right summer's over you could put that, put nah, that. i'm holding on i'm holding on <laughs> with everything i got yeah, it is still actually it's a kind of a nice sunny day out here today i'm like enjoying we've we've been pretty lucky it's it's definitely getting cold here but we've been pretty lucky with the weather by vancouver standards i mean you know for- tell me about the weather in vancouver yeah, so uh, as a, as I think I was saying, I don't know what we we caught there, but similar to uh, similar to Seattle, obviously we're just a little bit north of there, so we get a lot of rain. Um, but uh, surprisingly, it's been a pretty reasonable fall and and uh, winter 
uh, or start to winter anyway. Um, here it's we've been getting a lot of sunshine. I've been uh, been able to get out and golf actually. Even uh, you know it's a little little frozen out on some of the greens sometimes, but it's still out there in the uh, in the sunshine golfing, which is great. Yeah, it's not as bad as some people would think. I remember I uh, I was up in Toronto last year and I brought thermals and like a down jacket and all this thing. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't want to be freezing to death out there. And you know, I was like, I was getting off and walking uh, walking around at nighttime and it still wasn't even really that bad. The only problem I had yeah. was I didn't bring like uh, waterproof shoes and so there's oh, snow yeah. everywhere, right? And it's like, oh, that's, that's a mistake. But that's the key. Yeah, but it wasn't too key. bad. It wasn't too yeah. bad. No, it's pretty funny. We, uh, my, uh, my other gig is, is working in the film industry and, uh, it, it's always funny to see when you get like the LA executives or something that come up to Vancouver and they're just wearing like giant parkas and yeah. like, winter boots and stuff, expecting that they're, you know, that we're shooting in igloos or something up here. Oh, yeah. and, it's 60, and it's 60 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, ever you know, you've got, you got PAs or something that are, you know, locking up part of the set and they're wearing shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I'm like what are you talking about this is fine well <clears throat> the thing is too we, we i think we've been getting less and less rain because i just remember it being that much rainier back in the day i don't know why uh, but we were talking about our, our good friend zach throne when zach comes up to vancouver and uh, like I told you, Zach, uh, he stays with uh, with us when he comes up. And he was, and Zach's always like, "Okay, I'm coming up. I'll be there for four days, man. I can't wait to eat some sushi and hang out and chat. And man, I hope it rains. <laughs> he's just he's just hoping it rains. Right, moving he out goes, to Vegas. Rain and, yeah, he goes, oh man, I hope it rains like the whole time I'm there. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, we. What had... is it now, Jason? Is it like 200 days without rain in Vegas now? It's been forever, and we got some clouds like the past couple days, and it might have sprinkled just enough to where you could see that like, it sprinkled a second ago on the ground, but you never felt anything, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's been so dry. Oh, out now you got to wash your car. Oh, boo. I ain't washing my car. It's COVID, son. That's just. <laughs> 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 I tried to impress no one. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll wash yeah. my car when I get my job back. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Right. Right. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been a long drought, man. It's it's crazy. I mean, we've been inside for you know the majority of the time, so you don't really think about it. But it's it's been so long since we saw rain. And I even started making uh, like rain videos for YouTube because people are like they want they want to see and hear rain because they miss it, you know. And it's like becoming yeah. popular on YouTube to just put on a <laughs> channel with uh, some royalty free window with rain pouring because. I can't shoot my own window ever. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. Yeah, have the sun channel. Right? I can do the sun channel for sure. I can do sun. that forever. Though <laughs> oh, uh, so I should be doing like uh, sunsets. My buddy Drew Jackson does that, but uh, we get some beautiful sunsets out here. The sky's always turning yellow and pink and blue and all kinds of colors as the sun's going down. It's pretty magnificent, but, uh, you know, yeah. we could use some rain as well. That's for damn sure. I cleans the streets, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it gets dangerous, too, because it's like uh, cars have been driving on the road for so long without rain, and so the, yeah. there's just, like, dried oil just waiting to get slick again, and then, the, you know, the first downfall, it just is a, oh. it's a death trap out there. I've spun yeah, my that... car multiple times in Vegas not doing anything dangerous at all, like just turning at, like, 5, 10 miles an hour. <laughs> But it just started raining, and so my car just starts spinning in circles in the middle of the intersection. And I was like, "What the fuck? I was at a stoplight." <laughs> yeah, it's like desert ice. Yeah, it's dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. I've spun yeah. completely around in the middle of an on ramp of a of a freeway, not speeding, not driving recklessly. It's it's insane sometimes. Whenever that that first downpour hits, so dangerous, so yeah. dangerous. Because it just yeah, we'll go like you said, two hundred days something without rain, man. It's it's brutal in the desert. But I did see Mount Charleston got some snow yesterday. Oh, did it? I haven't seen that. Yeah. I've got, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, to going and seeing the snow, man. That's definitely a, a big, big privilege to, like, have Mount Charleston that close when you're living in the desert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I took Chico up there. I, I know we went to the uh, Area 51. That was fun. Yeah, Area 51. And we went to um, Valley of Fire. Oh, yeah. nice. Love it up there. Yeah, Valley of Fire. 
And we just kept going, bum, 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 <laughs> you know, thinking of, you know, Captain Kirk running around there being chased by the Gorn or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I went to Mount Charleston. I think last uh, last time Nicole and I were there, I think we went up Mount Charleston too and got away from the strip for a while. Oh yeah, I miss our drives up from Anaheim coming from the Nam show. That was always a good time. That was a good time. That was probably some of the most rain I've ever seen. Remember that one spot between we we'd go to the Nam show in Anaheim and Frankie and I would drive back in his truck all the way back to Vegas. And there was so much rain and just wind, and it was out of control. Frankie drove me back. I think uh, I was at staying at the New York, New York, and Frankie drove me back to my hotel uh, from L.A. right to Vegas. And we get out of the parking lot. We get out, and we're chatting for a second. We go, hey, where's your cover? Like his cover that went on the back of his truck, the hard cover, oh, it was no. gone. We didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't. And my golf clubs are in the back. Yeah, oh. they're all wet. <laughs> yeah, like it was one of those hard covers on the back, and then it was gone. Yeah, it through the Cajon Pass, there, Jason. You know the, the pass there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was rains an interesting. Fun hard. ride back. Yeah, but we stopped at that badass ghost town or something up there. Which one? There's a lot uh, of Calico. Calico. Yeah. Calico. Okay. Calico. I think it was right. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, there's so many like <laughs> crazy little uh, deserted towns outside of the Vegas area. You head any direction on any freeway, and there's a ghost town of like one abandoned gas station and a few little houses, yeah. and it's just. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's great! It is yeah. like you can, fantastic you can film photos. A, you can film like a Cheryl Crow video in every one of those places. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we have. That's uh, where we go to shoot music videos out here. Oh <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, for sure. Every time I see it, I just start thinking of Cheryl Crow songs. That's on the list for sure. Definitely got to do that. Oh, yeah. Just uh, don't do it in July. Yeah. yeah. I, just, <laughs> I made the drive back once from uh, – I went up through, like, Big Bear coming back from uh, from California once. And uh, it was actually the last time I was in Vegas. And uh, just remember, like, you know, driving by the one bar, and there's, like, literally a pickup truck and a motorcycle parked out front. And it's, like, a little tin roof bar with like no other building for a couple of miles and it, like i had to get the the car back i had the rental car and i had to get it back but i wanted to stop so bad and just like roll in there but i also realized like maybe it's not a good idea to just roll into that place as a complete stranger either right. <laughs> but well you maybe but, uh, but uh, don't kick the door and saying sup bitches <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right but i just love little spots like that like i always want to just check that that kind of stuff out just that little you know little bar in the middle of nowhere or you know random like you say little ghost towns and stuff like that 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 always kind of interests me so much like uh, i used to pioneer uh, saloon yeah, right? yeah i used to uh read uh water meters when i was going to college for audio engineering out in uh arizona and so i'm driving this jeep way the fuck deep into the desert to read all these properties that are maybe just getting built or whatever and there's and so i'd always hit lunch at some of those little places man and there'd be like literal horses tied to posts <laughs> outside of a wow. small bar on the side of a dirt road and there's like nothing for miles and i was like that's where i'm fucking eating lunch for sure so good oh Absolutely. yeah <laughs> and, uh, the best barbecue you've ever had in your life yeah and everybody's actually really nice in there you know you walk in and yeah. it's like some uh some old country music playing and people are pretty friendly uh it was it was, it was some nice experiences out there for sure man real cowboys cool. living out there that's <laughs> so cool See, i think we had lunch at the little alien didn't we chico Yes, we did. Yeah. A little alien. Good food. Good food. That was great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Couple, couple, uh, couple of cold beers out there after that long drive. Oh, what is it? Know, seven, been... seven miles on a dirt road, and we finally yeah. made it to the gate. Yeah. Have you yeah. been up there, Jason? The little alien. To, to Area 51. To oh, the yeah. I was going to ask alien? you. About, I was going to ask you about your Area 51 trip, actually, because I. I yeah. I've driven by there, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's Area 51 over that way. But uh, I guess there's, there's some tourist stuff over there or something like that. I haven't actually gone really close to the base. It's a seven-mile uh, dirt road to get right up to that fence where the, and the black mailbox and all that stuff. But the little alien, you get a, you get, it's like a gift shop and a motel. And they stay in these trailer homes, you know, if you wanted to stay overnight. And uh, they have pretty good burgers up there, actually. It was great. I bet I can look it up on this computer over here. Yeah. It's a little far so, out of my reach. 
whatever happened to that uh the big there's gonna be like the big gathering of <laughs> everyone oh, yes. going meet area fifty one. A friend of ours was uh he lost a, a shitload of money on that deal. Like yeah. everyone a million people replied yes they are gonna go and I think uh twenty three hundred people showed up. Oh or something like that. <laughs> well, I thought you were gonna they say had bands all lined up and uh you know, stages and, and merchandise and everything, they lost their ass. Oh, oh like, no. He lost like eighty grand on that deal. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was looking forward to uh, to all those people gonna rush uh, rush a military base. Oh, I mean, yes. the States, they were so excited. That's right. Just that's like you was, guys yeah. are gonna yeah. get slaughtered, literally. You can't just rush a military base. I don't <laughs> yeah. care what you're trying to prove, man. They were all looking forward <laughs> yeah. to trying out their new weapons, right? They're like, yeah. Okay, let's see what my little gun can do now. My right? new laser. They're like, yeah. I'm sure they had like less than lethal, like sonic cannons and stuff lined up and all this fun yeah. new technology. They're just like, let's see how, how fast you could put all these people on their knees yeah, you know, yeah. and just destroy their eardrums and the send all kinds of strobe guns. lights out of them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. Like in that movie. Uh, Man, I was really looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing footage of people trying to, trying to storm Area 51. That was just. That was gonna be hilarious. I'm glad no one got hurt, but man, I'm also kind of bummed that no one got hurt. <laughs> that was gonna be so funny. But, but yeah, they got shut down really hard, man. And then uh, there was some festivals, like some offshoot stuff that kind of went on around the same time because everything kind of collapsed in on the big the big festival that was supposed to happen out there. But it was really a anticlimactic event for sure. Well, there's no hospitals around there. There's really nowhere. If you get in trouble out there, there were, they would have been stuck. It would have been a disaster. If oh, yeah. Was, if they were trying to do another Woodstock there. It wouldn't have worked. No. It's the middle of the desert, like literally. It's, yeah. You're driving you know, a very long way before you see a town. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Bye. They, they might not get medical attention, but they'll get a damn good burger and a cold beer. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty right? good. And three, three porta potties for 250,000 people. Oh, right. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Well, we drove on that road right up to the gate. You know, the famous gate that there's a sign on there, you know, like, don't cross. Don't try to be funny and shove one foot over because you will be fined and you will be arrested. Oh, yeah. We got out of the car, we stood right on the side, and we just looked. And not even a minute later, the pickup truck was on top of the hill that they say, and the door opened, nobody came out, just like you see on TV. And I'm like, yes, there's the pickup truck. <laughs> and I spent all the time looking at all the, you know, the cactus over there to see if they were actually turning, to see if maybe there were cameras and fake cactus up there, but uh, I didn't catch anything. I think I said to Chico, I said, I, I wonder if they can hear what we're saying, and then the guy flashed his high beams, you know? Yeah. <laughs> of course That's they can hear what you're saying. It was so real? good. I, I, That's I enjoyed thinking. that. Yeah. I absolutely enjoyed that trip. I'll have to take my yeah. dad up there, man. He loves that shit. He yeah. loves it. Awesome. I like those little road trips. They're great. Oh yeah. Well, I'm just I'm I'm an alien freak, you know, like all that ancient aliens, I'll watch that all day long. When I get off tour, if it's ancient aliens marathon or shark week, don't even call me for six <laughs> days, you know. <laughs> the phone. Uh, <laughs> is an alien. Yeah, that's ancient it. Aliens. Just gonna hang out and watch ancient aliens and shark week and I'll talk to you, you know, following Tuesday or something. <laughs> Yeah, Ancient Aliens cracks me up. Like, the first season was really good, man. And then the second season, they're just grasping at every just straw they can grasp at. Yeah, they're just like, stretch that shit out as far as possible. <laughs> they're like, maybe. Yeah. They, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it was aliens, but. But maybe it was, it was aliens. aliens. Yeah. yeah. Who invented the ruler? Could it be humankind? Watch it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, you, I don't know. Humans, you, humans can't accomplish anything on their own. It was definitely aliens no. did everything for us. Aliens did everything. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are fun. Those are fun shows, man. The guy, the fucking guy with his with the crazy. haircut. Like, yeah. what is he think? What's he doing? Do you, does he oh. knows? Does he know how insane he looks with that haircut or is he intentionally <laughs> trying to look insane? <laughs> the guy's fucking great. Kramer, you know, the you know, Kramer haircut. That's exactly gonna, what it is. He's gonna bust through the door, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but I'm saying you know, that's that's one of my guilty pleasures as well. I'll be caught up watching Asian Aliens and just episodes start going by. I'll I'll do it on tour. 
Yeah. When I'm on tour with the Biff Band. A lot of times I get to the hotel. I don't watch movies. I don't sleep a lot. So this whole take a nap before between sound check and a show, and I just don't do it. So I'm always you know, UFO declassified and all of these. That's that's pretty much all I watch. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm fucking myself up is what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it, man. They just confuse the hell out of you and all your, uh, all ideas of like chronological history and like real things that are going on. They're just like, oh, well, you know, when they talk about, uh, angels in the Bible, were they really talking about angels or was it aliens? We're just asking oh, questions. Yeah. Just asking questions. You make up your own decision. Uh, but don't the HO wings, don't, are those, are those jetpacks or are those wings? Right. Seriously. <laughs> So Chico, this as soon as great. your hair starts to like, you know, cramer out a little bit, we're going to have to have an intervention. Uh, you think so, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, once I cut that'd it really be a hell short, of a Kramer. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a serious undercover brother Afro. That would be that came out there, right? uh, solid. solid. Exactly. <laughs> But, you know, it's kind of rock and roll. You get a little Kiss, Van Halen, Aliens, Star Wars, Shark Week. It's really just, and beers. Really, that's, that's why, I mean, that's what keeps me going, especially in COVID times. You're speaking yeah. my language, Chico. I'm telling yeah. you, man. That's, uh, that is all right up my freaking alley. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars, Frankie? Kiss, Ancient Aliens. Yeah, he'll come back. He's coming there back. Is. There he is. There we are. Yeah, Star hey, Wars, Ancient Frankie. Aliens. You just had uh, to kick the hyperdrive into uh, yeah, like right she, on the Falcon. Yeah. I love that That's backdrop, right. bro. Yeah. Well, it's a it's going to be a Mandalorian sort of evening tonight. I haven't watched any. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, season one, first one. Yeah. yeah. I had I had a hard time keeping up with the Mandalorian, man. We put it on like three or four times, and uh, I don't know. I I couldn't. Yeah. I, I love Star Wars too, and Boba Fett. But it's it's not grasping you. It's not grasping me. I think there's not enough dialogue going. That's a lot of action sequences. Right. Yeah. Did you try definitely... the new Picard show? Picard? Oh no. Yeah. I saw out. the first couple episodes. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. A little goofy at times, but it, it, it's it's pretty good. Star good Trek. Good to see him again. You know. You know what I watched yeah, uh, recently was uh, Utopia on Amazon Prime. It's got like Rain oh. Wilson and uh, John Cusack in it, and it's all about a pandemic going on that they're that's getting out of control. So it was fun. It was kind of that, oh, wow. that thriller goofy kind of thing. Yeah. But we really enjoyed that. We crushed that whole thing. Nice. That's, that's, that's what I do now. I, I came so late to watching any sort of series, like never, I was just never really that into TV. And I talked to everybody. Hey, are you watching a series? No, I never seen it. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Never seen it. Have you seen <laughs> Rome? I, I just, I just, I always found mm. something better to do than yeah. watch. And I, I guess I have some sort of fear of commitment with, you know, TV because I know I'm going to watch it. I'm going to waste, you know, three hours and then I'm never going to see it again. And uh, but now, my goodness, I just I now I can't stop Ozark. I love Ozark. Oh, that was yeah. good. Um, Show was killer. I started Breaking Bad after Breaking Bad was finished. And I was, I was uh, my, uh, my, my other singer in the, in the Biff Naked Band, Biff, she's like, uh, where are you on Breaking Bad? And I said, I've never seen it. She's like, wait, what? I was like, never seen it. She's like, uh, and we were staying at her, uh, her place in Toronto. And she goes, okay, I'm going to put on just one episode. See if you like it. And I watched an episode. I was like, well, that's cool. Let's just watch one more. <laughs> by the time I got through that, I was downloading them into my iPad so I can watch them on the flight. I came home. I watched all six seasons or whatever in in like six weeks just finish it i thought this is the greatest thing i've ever seen and now i watch series all the time uh, they were masterful about uh with breaking bad where they they end the, every episode on a cliffhanger and then they start the beginning of the episode with like a teaser about some horrible thing that's going to happen at some point during the episode but they don't tell you what the, yeah, the context is and you're just like yeah. oh i gotta watch it now i can't not see what happens yeah yeah, that was one of the best. And I love that they ended it, what, it was it four or five seasons, right? That they, I think five, yeah. Yeah, they so got in it. and out, and they didn't, like, stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. And they were like, here's the story. And it was always it was always popping, which I loved. Yeah. Still haven't finished it. That's one of those shows. Like, actually, I got, uh, I got through the first four seasons, and then uh, 
you know, admittedly, this was back in the, the days of pirating and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so I'd, I'd actually downloaded the fifth season and just got a, a bad version of it. But uh, now I've, I, I also like, I keep seeing it like come up on like on Netflix or whatever it is. And I kind of go, you know, it's been long enough now that I'd have to start at the beginning. Worth it. And I'm though. just kind of like, I'm just a little bit worried. I'm like, how much time have I got? Like, do I have time for five seasons of a show right now? I don't know. It is COVID. A, like you said, it's a Maybe big commitment. Right. But... I think I've watched the, all the Sopranos like three times. Oh, nice. Wow. In the past six years. Like the whole, it's so I'm, well done, that show. It's great. Never seen one episode. I you love the Sopranos, too. I have to check that mm-hmm. out for sure. I haven't seen that one either. You know, we and did, Jason, yeah. have, have you watched The Boys yet? I got my sister into The Boys. I did. I watched oh, a couple episodes of The Boys. Evil superheroes. The first episode's awesome, man. Like right away, it's, it's bloody and like they, they they show what pieces of shit these guys are. Like they're not these fantastical <laughs> beings that are like morally yeah. superior to everyone. They're That's humans neat, with neat superpowers that behave yeah. like human beings. No, I really, I I, I gotta show. watch more of it. Uh, what? Yeah, once. I was going to say, once you get back to film, I think they filmed that in Toronto, Frankie. You're going to have to hunt down the sets that. and check it out. I heard that, oh, yeah. yeah. And you work on The Flash, which is filmed That's out right. there in Vancouver, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I work on, uh, on a superhero <clears throat> show called The Flash. And Chico got me into a show called Kim's Convenience. Did you get the picture I sent you, Chico, of I found the Kim's Convenience store? No. I t- texted it to you. You never replied to me. I thought maybe he didn't get it, so... Oh, I'll, 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 I'll take you off and un, off of unblock now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He's watching Ancient Aliens again. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was. Nice. Yeah, pro- probably Mandalorian. Everything. All this. Yeah. yeah. It's all we did. Well, I spent so much time. I think when we were doing this album, I was basically in my basement for probably ten hours a day for like a half a year. Because not only were we doing the album, we were, I, I was learning a lot. Um, I was on Google and YouTube a lot. I can't get this to do this. Why am I, why is this not happening? So I'm t- always learning how to track. And then I was doing the drums at home. And then I would get Mike Federici over and he'd do guitar parts and then he'd leave. And then I'd be talking to Frankie as he's doing bass tracks and he'd send it to me and he'd leave. And then JB would come over. So as everyone came in for a few days or four days or five days for a song, I had 20 days of that because it was with three different people. And then ultimately as JB being the singer, he would do his parts and then I'd give him his parts, send him his parts back. Then he'd come back and... He'd call me or message me a couple of days later and go, you know, uh, there's something I want to try differently on this one part. So JB will be back. And then he go, okay, I think that's good. And then he'd go and he'd go, you know, the ending, I want to try something just a little differently in this part of the song. And then he'd end up coming back and it's the process of that was, was so long that when it was actually pretty much done, I think uh, I turned on my computer probably, I don't know, four times since then. The first time that I actually opened up Logic and got everything going was last night. That's when JB and Mike were over. I just kind of left it. And and Mike came over, hey, I want to do some demoing of some guitar tracks and see how they sound. And I was like, okay, hang on a sec. Okay, what's the keyboard shortcut for that again? I almost had to relearn because I just kind of put it out of my mind once I sent all the songs out for mixing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I got just deep into, you know, TV (laughs) (laughs) and the election and stuff. So, you know. I'm glad that shit's over, man. appreciate the engineers. I'm actually very glad the uh, election stuff's over. I've been I've been clicking anything that pops any political stuff up. I just go uh, not interested. Stop throwing me this. I don't want to see any more. Like <laughs> it's over. Yeah, yeah, I figure it's over. I'm not. I'm just not even watching it. And yeah. I don't like any of the, you know, just the aftermath. You're stupid if you voted this way. You're stupid if you didn't. You this. Uh, you know what? This thing happened. It's the way it happens. It's over. Yeah, why alienate 50% of the population? That that was why like one of the closest races I've ever seen in my life. And it's like, you're alienating half of the people that you know, man. Just don't be a dick about it, you know? Everybody's don't got be a dick about everybody's it. got their opinion, and they're entitled to their opinion. You know, like, Absolutely. That's so much so that great. I don't even care. You know, some people say, geez, I, you know, who voted for that? Don't care. I don't even want to know what my American 
friends voted for. Because yeah. I just so don't care either way who's uh, doesn't. Yeah. I don't even want to know. It, 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 <laughs> it takes both. Awesome. Can you imagine it's all the so interesting that it's over Thanksgiving? Talk. You're right. This, this, this Thanksgiving uh, for you guys is going to be quite interesting down there. It's been interesting for a while now, honestly. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of fights over what happened. Oh, yeah. People getting divorced. and yeah, It's just ridiculous, man. You know, everyone's cutting each other off and uh, no one's talking to anybody anymore. And all over a difference of opinion, which really both sides, we need both people, man. You know, we need the idealists. We other. need the structured yeah. people. And to put those ideals into place, it's like, you know, both sides are Take right. Both sides both are wrong. Sides, right? Calm the fuck yeah. down. Yeah. But everyone wants to be like, no, this is my tribe and I belong to it. It's like, no, you don't, man. You don't play for the fucking Raiders. It's not your team, right? Like, <laughs> you watch it on TV. Stop personalizing yeah. shit so much. Yeah. Uh, exactly it. But, you know, exactly it. everyone wants a war to fight. It, yeah. it's, I'm just glad it's over, regardless of the, the outcome, man. Although it's going to get dragged through the mud all the way up until the inauguration day, I'm sure. <clears throat> that oh, yeah. is. And we almost feel, we, uh, I guess, us as uh, you know, Canadians in Canada, it was, uh, I guess, for every once in a while, some things were entertaining. You know, it's like watching, I don't know, it was like kind of like, uh, like uh, what was that dude he's a... Uh, Guys would come out and hit somebody with a chair and shit, and oh, like not, wrestling. Not, yeah, WWE. like it was like well, not Maury Povich or like uh, one of those Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Yeah, Jerry yeah. Springer. It was kind of like that. Sadly, yeah, it was kind of like it. it was a little bit entertaining, but after a while, it was just like um, I don't know. This it just it's not. It's just didn't feel good. Plus, we're we're pretty chilled up here anyway, so everything is like, oh, I feel so sorry for this person, and I feel sorry for that side, and you feel sorry for everybody, and, yeah. but one, yeah, of the things I, was, one of the things I like about, like, Canadian language is the use of the word sorry, and you guys are, like, so uh, polite all the time, and they, I was reading a thing about uh, like uh, uh, legally saying sorry does not mean that you admit wrongdoing in a crime or like a criminal investigation it's like well you said you were sorry for it he goes well we say we're sorry for fucking everything they had to actually like write it in the laws that doesn't mean that i admit i did anything it's not an admission yeah. of guilt it's not an admission sorry. of guilt saying sorry yeah. sorry isn't just sorry yeah. sorry is also hello and sorry is like <laughs> it's like sorry 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. Right. yeah exactly. what somebody things. said hey what did you say sorry like, yeah. I mean, it's, it is kind of weird. Oh, That's dear. our next album yeah. title. I think Sorry. Sorry. We'll yeah. Either yeah. uh, that or Where's My Poutine. Oh, yeah. Poutine's good, man. What and was the funny, place? Frankie used to come up here to Vancouver and say, Where can we go get Poutine? And I was like, I don't know, Montreal? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like it's like going to California and saying, "I came all the way here to California because I want to find the best cannolis ever." <laughs> yeah, wrong coast, dude. You know? <laughs> right, right country, wrong coast. <laughs> yeah, for real. I had to try. I had to try. <laughs> Poutine's the bomb. What was that place I got? It had, I I can't remember the damn thing. I have it on my bag though that I uh, travel for work with. But the poutine up there in Toronto was amazing. And they just stuff it into a container, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. fantastic. I ate like, I, it's, they give you a little thing like that, and you're like, oh, that's it. And you start eating, and it just doesn't disappear. And it's like, how much fucking poutine did they stuff into this thing? It's like a Chris Angel show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's delicious. What a simple concept, just gravy and fries. But, man, is that shit delicious. Yeah, I had to get cheese some. curds though. That's oh, the, the cheese that's curds. The yeah, that's, that's, that's it. right. Is it, which I think is like che the worst sounding thing, but they taste delicious. Like a cheese curd. What the fuck is that? But, <laughs> but it tastes delicious. Oh yeah, it's it's really good, man. It's just salty and savory and just fucking bomb, dude. Poutine. I didn't know what the hell. I watch. Uh, I love Trailer Park Boys. I'm sure you guys are familiar yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. And they're always talking about poutine and everything and that shit. And I, uh, man. I was like, what are they fucking talking about? French fries and gravy, and then, lo and behold, that's just the I bomb. I love the one where they kidnapped Alex Lyson. Did you see that one? Yeah. Oh, I've seen them all, <laughs> man. Was the best. Yeah. Him sitting I was on the trailer with park Ricky's guitar, playing Rush songs. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chico, tell them about your cruise. On the... Yeah, that's right. I was in the Trailer Park Boys. They do a cruise, 
out of uh, Florida once every year, I guess last year, this COVID time, I don't even know what year that was. 2019, maybe? Yeah. They did a cruise, so they had a big... Late 2019, right? Yeah, they had a big cruise ship left out of uh, Miami, and it cruised all the way through and went around to the Bahamas, and then came all the way back, and it was all, all the trailer park boys were on it, and Tom Green, and just everybody was on it. And when my other band was on it, we played on there with a, with a band from uh, L.A. called Hookers and Blow. Oh. So, yeah, us, Hookers and Blow, and, uh, and a great Canadian band from the East Coast called Monster Truck. So three bands and all the trailer park boys for five days on a cruise ship. Damn, I was hungover. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was just messed up the whole time. That sounds like a blast, man. Oh man, it was so much fun. It was like the Canadian version of the Kiss Cruise, I guess, right? Oh, oh you right. guys do Kiss Cruise, eh? Oh, well, we're doing, you know, trailer park boys cruise. <laughs> yeah. Dude, those guys are hilarious. I saw them when they did the live tour and they came to Vegas. Oh, right on. Yeah, and they were selling cheeseburgers to the crowd. Yeah, at the Hard Rock, man. Yeah. And they were really taking people's money and, like, giving them these fucking shitty, like, microwave cheeseburgers (laughs) and just, they were hustling the crowd the whole time and (laughs) doing dumb shit. That was a great show, man. I was cracking up. Yeah, we got to go backstage and hang out with all the guys. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, they wanted to meet Vinny and hang out and whatever, so we had a great time. Of course, of course. Fun. That's one of the good things about uh, being in the entertainment industry in Las Vegas is a lot of times you you know people in the family and all of a sudden you get pulled into the crowd and you know, yeah. backstage yeah. and you get to go kick it. So that's, that's super fun, man. I, I really miss gambling while I eat. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and winning $800 at... Uh, at let's say uh, you know food leggers or something like that, right? Just yeah. having some Italian food and winning some money, right? It's a beautiful almost, thing. thing. Almost every, almost once a week at least, I'd be getting a, a a picture message from Frankie, and it's like you know his video poker kino or whatever it is. Yeah, oh, you know. eight hundred bucks, one you know thousand <laughs> bucks. Like, why even work, man? That's that's it. That's the life. That's all you got to yeah. do, right? That's how they get you. That's how they get yeah. you. Then you, that's when you start losing all your money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've worked in the casino as well. I actually worked in the, the hard rock up here in Vancouver and, and got to see a lot of money change hands in those places. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They are not built like, on remember, charity, man. No way. I remember I remember finishing one shift. I I, I, uh, I worked like a, I was working in a restaurant there and I finished a shift at about midnight or something, 1130 midnight one night and then came back to work the next morning at 1030. And I remember seeing the same person in the same clothes, like just hitting those slot machines, like, you know, whatever it was 12 hours later, just hadn't left. I've had some security like, guards Whoa. tell me that some old ladies will not give up their machines. They'll sit there and poop their pants and yeah. pee on the seats and everything. Uh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Wow. They're so yeah. afraid of the next guy coming on and winning what they've been working for all day. Yeah. They've been, yeah. they've been cycling through the bad polls. So they, they want that yeah. good one to hit for them. They yeah. want the good one. Yeah. Is that gross? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's an addiction, man. It's it's just yeah. as bad as drugs, you know. Then there you go. And they got those slot nice. machines to make all the noises and and do all kinds of flashy moves. And it's like it's stimulating visually, it's stimulating sonically, and it's it's designed to keep you sucked in, man. And no like they windows, do. no clocks. Yeah, there, there's there's a business opportunity. Just walk around selling depends at the uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> through the casinos, Ow. right? <laughs> Then they got to change yeah, it right I, out in it, public. Put <laughs> <laughs> a blanket up. Right, and bring, the, ahead. bring a beach towel real quick. Go and, ahead, Grandma. Yeah. Well, I, I play the kiss slot machine every time. I never win on it. Of course not. And the kiss one. And my wife always goes, you play the kiss one all the time. I said, well, you know, I, I have to make my yearly, you know, donation to the kiss army here. You know, I got to pay my dues every yeah. year. <laughs> Uncle G <laughs> no, needs his money. Our, tell them our favorite game. Oh, that uh, fishing slot machine, gone fishing or something. Oh yeah, big big fishing or whatever, big time fishing or big something. Where fish. Six people are all in a row chasing, and you all sit there and try to catch these fish. Oh my! And, and it's, it's got the rod and the reel and the little reel on there, and you're pulling it up. Really? And it's a slot machine? It's a slot machine, and with a huge screen over top, and everybody yeah, like has all, to catch the big fish. All this, and I remember that time we were we were there for about an hour or two. Uh, there was about six or eight of us all down there, and I pulled up the thousand dollar fish. Oh, yeah. nice! Was that a Casino Royale or was it that a was Excalibur? a Casino Royale? Remember. Casino Royale. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like fun. 
I love that joint. Oh, so it was a blast. It's, it's a group thing. It's like you're all yeah. playing it, right? Six of you playing it. And then I'm sitting there trying to pull, you know, the rod in, or my, my rod is all shaking, and I'm reeling this thing in. And um, my wife's cousin is her husband, who's from, you know, a town up in northern British Columbia. He was with us, and he, and he fishes. And so I'm just pulling on this rod, reeling out of it. He goes, oh, 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 don't touch it. Wait for the till the head pulls up and then just they just reel in and I'm thinking okay so I'm sitting there and I just see your tail and then I see just a tip of the head and I go boom I pull it once it goes boom thousand dollars I was like hey thanks buddy <laughs> and because you know I like to hit the slot machines and have some fun but right they're like oh my god Chico you just won that and I went boom cash out that's it I'm out yeah. <laughs> just got that's Did a smart like, move win, or at least buy him a drink I bought stuff. Actually, uh, yeah, we 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 just we stuff. just went out. We got crazy. It was so great. But I was just like, they're like, dude, you just won the big one. Are you out? I'm like, yeah, I'm cutting out. See you later. Let's go. You guys want some drinks? I'll buy you some drinks, something to eat. But I'm out. That's, <laughs> That's a smart, smart move, trip. man. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's so everybody's uh, everybody's like wins, and then they get that big hit of uh, dopamine, and then they're like, oh man, that was so much fun put all this money back. I'm going to get that one more time real quick. And it's like, no, no, you're going to lose all the money. You just won. Do it. <laughs> and they do every yeah, time. I, I hit that cash out button quicker than I, uh, than I, than I hit the, the rod and reel. Boom. <laughs> boom. I'm gone. Walking out. <laughs> Always a smart move, man. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen guys. Uh, I've seen guys get off work and they're like doing security for ten bucks an hour, and we'll go. Uh, we'll go to the bar or something after work, and they'll sit there just smashing the uh, the button on a uh, whatever the fuck they're playing tabletop game at the bar, putting yeah. hundred dollar bills in, and it's like, man, that was like all the money you just earned today. And there's another hundred, and another. He's like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it eventually, man. Uh, and it's like, oh, bro, bro, you're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They go, look, that, I won 200 bucks. It, I watched you put 300 fun? in. <laughs> yeah, no. Like you said, you're just smashing a button. Like, I understand, like, even what Frankie was saying, like, you sit there, you're like, you know, shove them in your face full of pasta or something. Then every once in a while, you give the game a smack and be like, all right, did I win anything? Nope. All right. Oh, oh I just won the tip. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, that's the thing no, about like, the keynote. You can just set it and forget it, right? Just keep hitting yeah. the thing and not even, you're watching a sports game or whatever. Like, oh, yeah. shit, I won some. Oh. That's why I like. <laughs> Even if I'm going to hit, like, a, a slot machine, like, I'm going to find the one with, like, the actual arm. Like, I want to physically, like, pull that thing and, like, at least get something out of it. Just, like, hitting a little button. Like, you can do that on your phone all day long. It's, it's, I like no the old ones that. with the coins falling down, like, down on yeah. Fremont Street. At the yeah, Elkhorn exactly. Heads, you know? That's what I was just about but to say. But then your hands all smell, you know? Gross. <laughs> yeah, you got to bring some, uh, and that's some hand sanitizer with you. that's great for COVID times, eh? Touching all the chains. Oh. Perfect, right, Jake? Oh. Yeah, you got somebody else's fruit basket on all those coins and oh, yeah. rubbing themselves. Just lick them, lick them before you put them in the bucket. <laughs> For luck. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I remember one time we went down to, um, I think I was with Throne, and we went to Bootleggers, and we sat up at the sat up at the bar, and we sat up there, and I'm like, I'm gonna get a vodka seven, please, and Zach got something or another, and the guy goes, All right. So do you, do you want me to pay me or do you just want to put that money in that machine? I was like, and Zach goes, put, put, put your money in the machine. I put the money in the machine. All right, here you go. Yep. So that's how easy it is. Like, do I want to pay for the string or do I just want to put the money in and just play for a while? And we did. We just sat and played and we ate the bootlegger seafood pizza, which is I dream about when I'm not in Vegas. And, and I, I, think, I think we probably ate and drank for free. So right. sometimes it works out for you. And yeah. every time I'm there, Chico, you know this, the Flava Flav's always there. Oh, yeah. Flav's yeah. After everywhere. every hockey game or just hanging out there, and we'll shoot the shit. He's such a cool guy. He's, he's so nice. He's a Is wild he man. Pizza? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I seen that motherfucker body. walking through Walmart. Uh, no shirt on, short, just shorts and, like, no shoes and fucking his underwear is up to his fucking chest, you know? And... <laughs> And like he's just screaming, Flava, Flav! <laughs> yeah, it's like fuck, man. You're just getting groceries, dog. <laughs> well, Chico does that too. Same way. Guy's wild. It's like, would you like, would you like your receipt today? Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a madman. Super fun to hang out with. Yeah. Big hockey fan. Big hockey fan. Yeah. Yeah. God, I miss watching hockey. Eh, JB. Oh yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we were at Frankie and I actually were at the uh, the very first home home game, the uh, regular season home game for the Knights. Right after October first. Yeah. Yeah. 
that was, uh, again, that was my last time down to Vegas. Actually, it was, uh, that was actually an interesting time. Actually, it, it, that was a big eye opener for Vegas for me. Cause it was, uh, um, right after the, the shooting that had happened. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, my, my experience with Vegas before that was always just, you know, you go down to see a concert and you're, you're just there partying it up. And, and, you know, I would just kind of thought of Vegas as the strip and this, that was the first time I really got to like venture off the strip and, and, and actually talk to some more like local people and meet a few other people. And I got to really realize how much of a community there really is there. You know, the whole they Vegas that. strong thing. That was like the thing. glue that brought everybody together. And there was, you know, it's what yeah. the city really needed at that time. And it's sad to say, but it worked out pretty good. Uh, everyone mm-hmm. just came together. They needed something to uh, bring everybody together. And the Golden Knights was the answer. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, and I guess really that brought this Remember we cried during that, that open ceremony? Oh, was so dude, there, I don't think there was a dry eye in the it's place. It's a great job. Yeah. It was incredible. The teams, the hockey is such a classy sport. It's just, uh, yeah. I love it. I'm so proud of those guys. Yeah. You know, the guys will smash each other's heads into the boards and then shake hands afterwards, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like, like us. Kind of like us in rehearsals. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and JB was in Toronto uh, last Christmas, and we, we uh, were able to catch a Maple Leaf game. We had That's the nosebleed, the last row, I think the second last row of, of the Scotiabank oh, Centre for 100, 130 bucks for nosebleed tickets, but it was so worth it. It was such a good time. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, was it the Red Wings too, right? Two, two yeah, we're, six we're, teams. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. That's that's one of the other reasons we just want to get back to touring. Really, is just so we can go and see more hockey games. <laughs> <laughs> just want to try and try and catch as many different arenas as we can. We, it's one yeah. uh, one thing's actually. Uh, um, I'm a big Bill Burr fan, and that's one of the things he's managed to like work his way through pretty much every like professional sports arena that there is. Like done all the NFL teams and the the MLB and the hockey like. I definitely want to try to start checking some more of those off the off the list. Oh, that's a good idea. Because I can say, you know, I've done, I've only done Vegas, uh, Vegas, Vancouver, Toronto so far. But I mean, I've seen a good number of of the teams, but just haven't been to their home arenas yet. Dude, speaking so, of, Vegas, we have to go to Europe. We have to go to Europe and catch a, a soccer game proper. All oh, right. Yeah. Right. Those got to yeah. be fun. friggin' wild, man. Yeah but, yeah, but we'll just stay off the subway because we don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, had, I've had a similar <laughs> similar experience to that. Mm-hmm. Was uh, it was the Rugby World Cup in Australia? Because uh, I'm actually originally I was born in Australia and my family's still down there, and and uh, I got to see the World Cup when it was there. And again, this is similar to you know soccer. It's like you know seventy thousand people in a in a stadium, and it's just like absolutely bonkers like uh, my, my cousin was actually at a game that was uh as a match it was tonga versus new zealand and so they're two countries that have the haka that they do at the beginning of the match it's kind of like their their war dance the challenge and uh, he said that he was sitting up in the, the stands and there was lightning cracking above the stadium and uh and then these, these two teams just doing this war dance at each other and he said it's like the most intense moment he's ever seen in his life oh yeah you know, two, these two teams of these like massive dudes just screaming at each other getting ready to do battle on the field but um like experiences like that i mean that's one of the things i think is kind of rare to sports is you just kind of get these these rivalries and these you know the competition is just so awesome that's why you know it'll be really great once uh, they can open things up again and see you know the that new vegas stadium the death star open oh, up. that'll be great it looks like a monolith outside man i mean it's yeah. just this big obsidian structure that's just shiny and brand new and they're yeah. letting wow. some people in but uh it's you know of course not at full capacity but oh, so they are they are allowing people in now uh, yeah, some of the football stadiums have been doing like, uh, say, like fifteen percent capacity stuff like yeah. that. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah you try to get some kind of revenue going. A lot of people mm-hmm. invested a lot of money in um, buying those seats whenever that stadium was being right. built. I have personal friends, right. and, it's, and it's, it's not cheap, <laughs> no. not cheap at all. And then it's like, yeah, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to take advantage of your investment, and that that really. Yeah is uh that's hard to sw- that's a hard pill to swallow for sure and so i think they started letting some of those people go and and buy tickets to games that own seats and stuff like that yeah um because is it yeah. is it like they they own it for like a certain number of years or something or a season or how how long is it, it how does that work i think it depends but um i think you can renew it as it goes but i know a lot of people end up buying seats for like you know five ten years it's like those are their seats you still have to pay for tickets right but you mm-hmm. get to 
choose your seats and then you have first dibs on the tickets. And a lot, what a lot of people do is okay. they just buy the tickets and then stub hub them uh, mm -hmm. for whatever events happening, no matter what. It's just like have a little side cash going so you can resell those tickets and let people use your seats and, and actually make some money back off of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, my I, my buddy uh, he owns a yeah. little production company out here, and he he bought two of those seats so he could kind of take people and schmooze people and stuff at the at the games and uh, and yeah, he's it was a lot of money to invest, and then he wow. <laughs> for him not to be able to take advantage of yeah. it. Yeah, I so. hope they're gonna at least like extend you know extend that kind of thing. Like I said, if it was like a you know say they bought like a five year thing, that maybe they're gonna push it push it back and make the end date a little bit later or something. That'd be great. You would hope, man. You would hope. That's for sure. But yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to some of the insane concerts that they're going to bring to that place, man. Like that's, Absolutely. that's going to be awesome. Freaking, I think it's 60,000 seats at the wow. Death Star. And yeah, who knows what the fuck's going to show up there, man. It's going to, Oh, they'll get uh, guns and roses. will come through there. I'm sure. Gross. <laughs> I want to, I want to see Ramstein. That's oh, what I want to see. Something yes. Like there. <laughs> that would be incredible, friggin' Rammstein. Yeah. I'd come down for that. Right? I've, I've seen them the three ones I haven't times. That was the best show on earth. Dude, it's seen it. so much pyro. Oh, yeah. I've only seen the two, you know, on Amazon Prime and somewhere else. It's two different concerts. The one in America and one somewhere in Europe or somewhere, and it's out of control. Oh, I yeah. I got to see them twice in a week. Did you, you really? Vinny, did you? I flew to, I, Vinny opened for them with Hell Yeah. That's right. Um, three years ago. In Dallas, uh, Ramstein got to pick their opening act, so they wanted Hell Yeah in, in Dallas, and then uh, I got to see them in Vegas with uh, Stone Sour and uh, Corn. Oh, oh nice. wow! So That's I got cool. to see them in an That's outdoor cool. venue. You know, in, in Dallas, it, it was so humid. It was I, I don't believe I can't believe how they because they're hot enough with that pyro, but in in that Dallas humidity, oh my God, it was like June, June twentieth or something, and uh, wow. it was. Like we were sweating like 50 rows back. It was crazy. Wow. Come back to see him on an indoor venue. It's a totally different show, but uh, it's mm -hmm. unreal, man. Yeah, that pyro gets so guys. hot too, man. You know, you go see like a Kiss concert or something like that, and they get those big pyro towers shooting. And it's like even if you're way back in the seats, man. You feel you, that. You yeah. feel the it. heat. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Oh, but there's nothing. Nothing makes you dig into your instrument harder than when you feel that pyro on your back, though, man. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, she, that's for so, sure. You ready? She goes ready for it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I played yeah. in the middle of the damn desert. I there was. I I played bare feet. Right. I'm a barefoot drummer. There was some shows that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, my shoes are on because oh, yeah. my drum riser was the metal great ones, and I think it was one night we went on at 10 p.m. and it was still. Well, what's 36 degrees down there? 172, 100, 102? Yeah. At 10 p.m. at night, the the grate, like my drum riser was like a waffle iron. I'm like, no, hold on. That's a, <laughs> no, give me those clogs. Who's got a pair of clogs I can wear for this show? <laughs> oh. Yeah, it gets hot, baby. It gets hot out here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It's crazy yeah, in the yeah. summertime, and it does not cool off, man. Like I, yeah. I like to run, but like once once it hits, uh, once it hits June, July, August, it's like you're not running. No way, no how, and no time of the day, man. Yeah. It's just your lungs collapse in on yourself. I feel sorry for dogs walking your dog at like noon or three in the afternoon. No, you can't. It's 115 you can't outside. Do it. You can't. They, man. They're burning their little paws, right? Yeah, yeah. You, the like the rule is if you got to go outside and you put your palm on the on the pavement. And if you can't hold your palm on the pavement, the dog can't either and go back inside, yeah. you know, like, yeah. fair enough. because you'll burn your dog. Or get him those little booties, right? Yeah. yeah booties, My yeah. dog got booties for his dog. Yeah. That, that does work too. But yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll, they'll melt. I've seen so many sad pictures of dogs, their feet's just all blistered up and stuff because people don't know any better and, <sighs> oh, and they take their dogs shit. out walking in the middle of the summertime. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. I was there once where, uh, Every time I left my hotel and I opened the door, it felt like I opened an oven that was a broil and just breathed in as deep as I could. Oh. Holy shit. Frank, you remember that one time we were there and it was just like, it was like hot sand. Just, it was like a sandstorm and heat and it was like I was on fucking tattooing or something and it was just out of control. Yeah. It was but, but in the wintertime, you have to... But it up. wasn't raining. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's definitely no not rain. raining. Yeah, it's getting nice now. It's like uh, it's like jacket weather. 
and uh, which is just beautiful for Vegas. You get to break out the jackets and and go outside and like breathe the air without dying from it. That's, yeah. that's one of the things I love about Oregon, man, is the air. Like the humidity's just right and the temperature's just right. Remember the first time I went there, we went and got groceries and I walked outside of the grocery store and I just take a big, big deep breath in and I'm like, man, it smells so fucking good out here. And my buddy's like, you're standing next to a trash can, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it still smells better than Vegas, man. It's, it's fucking fantastic out here. Yeah. yeah, it's all organic food in there, anyways. This is organic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, or so it's, it's finally that time of year where dummies like me who wear leather jackets all year round stop sweating. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's crazy to me, man. Like guys that want to do that, wear the leather in the middle of summer. Yeah. You, <laughs> you are resilient, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the Australian blood in me, though. I tend to, I tend to cope with the heat. All right. Yeah. It's the uh, it's the cold. I cannot stand being cold though. That's that's the thing for me. Like, if I'm cold, it's like that ruins my day. Oh, dude. Yeah. Coming from desert area, man, and you're used to being yeah. hot all the time. Even mm -hmm. slight temperature shifts, man. It starts, it starts getting to the 60s or so, and you're just like, it's just freezing out here. And they're like, it's 65, yeah. man. Calm the fuck down. Yeah. I was like, it was 120 <laughs> where I just got on a plane, so it's very cold for me. Yeah. 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 So, so remember, Zach's uh, actually how Chico and I met, right? Right, Chico? What's that? Zach, Zach introduced us the first time. Yes. Yes, because uh, I did sessions with Zach up in Vancouver, and uh, Zach said, hey, you know what? Come down to Vegas anytime, stay at my crib, take you out, uh, show you places around. And and one day my wife said, you should go, you should go down and go see Zach. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm so busy. She's like, well, I booked your flight already, so you better go down. And I talk to Zach, he's expecting you. So, you know, uh, first night, stay in a hotel because I flew in really late. Next morning, Zach comes over, you know, picks me up, go back to Zach's place. And he goes, oh, man, we're going to go out here and we're going to go to, the, you know, the Red Rock uh, Canyon and walk around. And we're going to get a Capriotis and then the Robertos and all this great stuff. And then... I'm gonna go. You're gonna go check out this band tonight. They're all Canadians. You're gonna love them. They're all great. And we went out to like Bill's Gambling Hall. Oh, nice. Down, went down and there was, uh, you know, uh, the. Uh, you hang on. You what were you called back then? The Crashers, probably. Crashers, yeah. And that was, and Frankie was up there playing with the Crashers. And Zach goes, "Yo, this Chico from Canada. Hey, Canadian. Hey, want to come up, Jim? Sure. You know, just get into Vegas, get a good glow on over at Zach's. I'm full of Capriotis and all this shit. And ten minutes later, I'm up playing like Van Halen and Zeppelin and stuff with all the Canadians in Vegas. That's funny, <laughs> dog. I think yeah. we worked together before we worked together at Vamped because I used to run uh, Big Elvis over at Bill's Gammon Hall, and I remember." The Crashers coming in and uh, playing cover songs over at Bill's, man. Yeah, that was a fun. We were the last band to play Bill's Gambling Hall before they closed it and changed it over to that, whatever it's called, Dre's now, I guess. Dre's, Dre's yeah, because the yeah, nightclub was so popular. We were, so we were popular. the last band in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I yeah, I remember We sat days. there with a the big pitcher, just big pitchers on the table. Oh, yeah. yeah. I miss playing there. It was a long night, but it was, uh, you know, four or five sets we did there, but it was, it was always a good time. Yeah, they were working you guys over there. I remember they were they were the the house bands at night, man. They were making you guys play I got all a great freaking story night long. From there. I got a great story. So we're playing. I'm doing my thing, and we all smelt something, like ripe. Like, what the fuck is that? And I almost threw up, you know, ha. and we're playing and playing. And uh, I see out of the corner of my eye, this, this homeless guy had walked in from the street and um, we kept playing or whatever. And security was over there. And uh, what really got it for me was Michael, our guitar player at the time says, uh, excuse me, sir, you're going to have to put your shoes back on. And I almost threw up on my drummer. It was so <laughs> disgusting. It was like, uh, it was memories from Bill's gambling hall. Oh, it was yeah. feet. His feet. His feet. Oh. He must have. Oh. Wow. Yeah. It was yeah. gross. It was, uh, I almost threw up all over, all over Terry. So. Yeah, Bill's are good. <laughs> and he was like 50 feet away from us, man, but he could still wow. smell like he was right next to you. You know? So well, my, my hat's off to him. Uh, gambling hall. Yeah. I really love that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it was right on the corner of Flamingo, and you just go down a little ways to Koval, and it's like it's got that shitty little uh, liquor store where you can go buy cheap booze and all those yeah, alleys and stuff, man. Yeah, yeah it was. Place, right? Uh, yeah, that Lee's discount liquor. No, it wasn't a Lee's, but yeah, there's a ton of those. Oh out here. man, I remember that place. It was like Ooh, the oldest, yeah. oldest lease in Vegas or something. They say they have, but uh, yeah, yeah and then all it's kinds of riffraff cool. comes directly from that liquor store right into Bill's gambling hall, man, and wow. just causing a ruckus all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I, I suddenly I, had I, some respect for him and those drivers down there. Oh yeah, man. Oh, no yeah, I can imagine. I loved the old. Ghetto Vegas. Like, I've been going there for so long. I, I think I stayed at almost every hotel. I used to stay down on the other side. Like, now I'm always at the New York, New Yorker. It's always like when I go visit Frankie, I go visit Zach, I go visit all my friends down there. They love it when I stay at the Four Corners. Whether I'm at the New York or the Excalibur or the MGM, they, because they, hey, dude, stay there. We can just get off the highway, come through the parking lot, pick you back up, and just go back on the highway again, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of times, it's where you're staying. Yeah, I'm down at the uh, Flamingo or something. They're like, oh, fuck, Got okay. Across the strip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I back in the day, I used to stay. Damn, I stayed at the Riviera. I stayed at the Circus. I stayed at all those little places over in that side when my wife used to go down to play in a, a girls' pool league. Oh, like a, the little championship billiard things. And so she'd go and I'd go down there and that's where it was at the Riviera. So I'd be staying down there all the time. So I love that old school. Well, maybe not the feet, but you know, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. maybe not the effervescence, but the feel of it was, <laughs> right. yeah, they just tore the uh, Riviera they down. The Rio? Did they what? Is the Rio open now? I think everything's open just with restrictions on it now. But, uh, the Palms didn't open, though, eh? No, actually, yeah, you're right. No, the Palms is still closed down, man. Uh, I'm not sure. Hey, baby, is the Rio open? No. Yeah, the Palms got sold. And so they're just doing some renovations as well as the uh, the Hard Rock is yeah, also. I was just going to ask what's going on with the Hard Rock because that used to be my, my favorite spot. It was going to be there. the Virgin Casino, right? Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be Virgin did Casino. Did he back out or is he okay. No, no. Actually, uh, the very last podcast I just did, my buddy John Stevens is in there installing gear. And uh, they said they uh, the whole guitar is, the neon guitar is in the back on its side. And they are turning it into this whole new experience. And yeah, the, so the Hard Rock's closed right now, being remodeled. But uh, I actually did just get hit up by a band uh, that I work for, and we're supposed to be in there performing uh, in January. We're supposed to be doing a little, uh, I think, live stream kind of uh, oh, really? exposure thing. Yeah. Right on. So, cool. uh, yeah, it should be opening back up. I can't remember the name of the hotel. Hang on. I think they put sent it to me in my uh, thing. Switch the cameras while I'm doing this. So I was a little sad to hear that the Hard Rock was closing because I had a nice tradition there. Of I have uh, I have a collection of of selfies of myself with uh, Taylor Swift's guitar there. Oh yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was always funny. Like you'd walk in and you'd you'd walk past you know like the Slipknot case and there's all the masks and stuff, or you you know you'd see you know Guns and Roses or whatever, and then all of a sudden you got Taylor Swift's acoustic guitar, and I just I just always thought that was so funny. And uh, so I just, that was like my tradition. Every time I'd go to Vegas, whether I was staying there or not, I'd always have to make a trip to the Hard Rock and go and get my selfie. <laughs> That's like when, when Chico and I went to the NAMM show, and my favorite picture of anybody that I met there was Kenny G. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember? Remember Kenny G? Kenny G. Oh, my. <laughs> this is the coolest photo from NAMM, man. Me and Kenny G, dude. <laughs> Hardcore. That's metal. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, me, me at NAM, it wasn't even pictures of uh, people. It's like, I think I had like 27 pictures of me and the Alex Van Halen snare drum. Ah. Just like, <laughs> just the snare. <laughs> just like almost one single tier holding it. <laughs> oh, NAM is a musician's playground, man. That is oh, so goodness. fun there. I like the, uh, the crazy instruments that people come up with, and they're all trying to get people to buy these new, like, digital fucking whatever the hell they are. And it's, yeah. you've never seen him before. I still had a card from one of those. There's just some exact, just elaborate instrument. There's like a keyboard, saxophone, guitar. But it's all <laughs> digital. And it's like, who the fuck's going to play this, man? Who is yeah. going to play and this? Like, and it like makes coffee too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the Frank Zenza signature 48 string bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he needs a signature uh, bass ukulele. 
with seven strings. <laughs> It'll be ready in December. Right. It's coming. I got my hands on a 24 string bass the last time I was at NAM. That shit was tight. Was it the green wow. one? Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous, man. It's, but basically, what is it? It's an eight string bass, but strung up with a high and a low above each core like string. Like a 12 string guitar. Like right? a 12 string guitar, but like a triple, yeah. triple yeah. kind of going on, man. It was. It was fun to play though. It sounded really cool, man. I was doing all kinds of weird yeah. fi primacy things on it, and uh, uh, it came out really good. But fucking neck was it was gross. And then you went to the studio and they were said, you know, can we we're looking for more of like a run running with the devil sort of feel on that one? Yeah. Can you? <laughs> bah, 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 yeah. Bah, bah. Can you just can you just quarter the E for us, please? That would be great. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly what happens. <laughs> this is driving nuts. It's funny seeing these guys who get a five or six or seven string bass and they forget how to play bass all of a sudden they're guitar players. It's like, where's the bottom end gone? You know? Yeah, right. Uh, even though I played a seven string a lot, it was like a Swiss Army guitar. I, it had everything I needed, but I didn't forget how to play bass with the thing. So, what's the lowest string? Is there something? Low B. There's a low, low B. B. And so it's the, now you're there's just extra high strings to it. Yeah. Mm. There's a high B and then what's the what's it's the seven? Just, just, just for looks. Just for looks. Yeah. For the yeah. Prime Discover band. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That was uh that was actually my thing, man. Blue collar bastards. Right on. I had a lot of fun doing that stuff, man. I Fucking, love Prime's. Oh yeah, oh. me too. I I can't wait yeah, to start you playing again. Bass for me, didn't you, Jason? Remember that I did that Primus looking bass I had? I was, I was, yeah, man, I got to buy a fucking custom it. one. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to get a, a custom base made with uh, the whammy bar and all the proper wood. And I have his exact setup, but, you know, I can't get a Carl Thompson for $12,000 because I'm not rich. <laughs> 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 I can't afford $12,000 base. The first, time I saw, the first time I saw a whammy bar on a base was Randy Coven. Oh, Remember yeah. him? Uh, no, I don't actually. Uh I think uh, John play Petrucci played on his records uh, back in the, the 90s. He's yeah. from Buffalo, but he, you know, went to, uh, you know, uh, GIT or BIT at the time. And he used to date a girl in Mississauga. He used to uh, go to Phil X's jam all the time up the street here from where I live. And that's where I met him. And uh, he had these double neck basses with a piccolo and a regular bass guitar. Oh. And he had the whammy bar on it, you know. And I was like, that's, that's pretty wild, man, you know. It sounds super cool, man, when you're rocking those things, and uh, you just you can get all kinds of crazy instruments and, and notes, or sorry, cra crazy sounds and notes going on when uh, when you put a whammy bar onto a bass, man. It's just like yeah. those fucking strings. I yeah. I'm dying. Wow. Now, I'm sorry, it was just Al Petrelli that played on his records. Oh, okay. Yeah. Al Petrelli, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I have to do all kinds of dumb shit when I'm doing the Primus stuff to get somewhat <laughs> close to those sounds without a whammy bar. Like yeah. Literally so bending the, the neck first, as hard as I can. <laughs> the first Primus song you learned on bass? Was it Tommy the Cat? Definitely not. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's a hard-ass song to play. I always wanted to learn. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I could, I could play that for sure, but like the first song I learned on for Primus was probably like, uh, you know, My Name is Mud or something like that. Something a little more down to... Something a little simpler, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Tommy the Cat's a monster of a song. Yeah, it, that that's, took me... That's where I started to learn so long. Primus stuff. Yeah. No, that's a fun that's one, man, for sure. Though. Yeah. Or um, my name is was that sailing the seas of cheese? That was pork no, soda. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Mo was on pork soda. That's a crazy, crazy record, man. Yeah. I want to do the uh, the hamburger train on that song. That album. It's like a ten minute just jamola, but uh, <laughs> some of those fucking things are ridiculously long and take forever to learn just one song for the set. Does we, he yeah. still have rain on drums? Yeah. He uh, no no actually he got Tim Alexander back. So the last oh, the last couple nice. times I saw, drummer. it's all original. Well, original if you. I mean, Tim was really their first official drummer, but they had like five drummers before Tim. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they uh, they got Tim Alexander and of course Larry Lalonde, who basically is Primus with uh, with Les's career. He's always jumping in with other guitar players and drummers and stuff like that. But it's like if he does Primus, it's never a different guitar player. It's always Lur. So he's yeah, and then they switch between they... Tim and Brain. They were gonna head out. And they were gonna do a bunch of Rush 
song that wasn't that going to be like the tour that they were going to do is they were going to be yeah. playing, playing a bunch of rush tunes oh wow. yeah yeah it's going to be um, awesome man like the last time they did something like that it was uh primus did a bunch of pink floyd stuff so they did like the entire animals album uh by pink floyd and then yeah they would just do whole shows he'd do it with flight frog brigade as well where they just fucking play pink floyd for like two hours straight but all yeah. funky and just it's amazing it's amazing what he does so i was really looking forward to the rush tribute that they were going to put together yeah but it'll come back it'll yeah come i was gonna say sure. i wonder if he'll still end up doing it just you know oh yeah postponing it kind of like everyone's doing you don't put in that much time to learn that many rush songs and not play them for yeah. somebody right <laughs> and not play them yeah. yeah fair enough that's some hard stuff yeah, we were actually yeah. talking about doing some Rush stuff in the Primus set as well for the tribute since he was doing it. And also, we just love Rush. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing, if you're already in that that genre of music, of course you want to play fucking Rush, man. That punk yeah. rock thing. Mm -hmm. So Y Y Z, that was yeah. always a fun one to jam. I rode the bike out to see the Neil Peart statue, and it hasn't even been started yet. They have finished pictures of it on Facebook, so I rode all the way down there to Lakeside Park, and it's not there. That's how it always <laughs> goes, man. You know, yeah. that you can't believe what you see on He's the like, internet. He's like, well, if you're coming to see what you saw on Facebook, it's not here yet. Yeah. What? It's Security ridiculous. Security card, right? <laughs> <laughs> but here's a postcard with the artist's rendering of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, uh... And yeah, I couldn't get in because I wasn't, a, I didn't have, like, local ID because of the COVID, right? You have to be from around that neighborhood to actually get into the park. Oh, really? I'm like, but I just, oh, wow. yeah, I'm just here to see the Neil Peart statue. And he's like... Whatever you saw on Facebook ain't here yet, son. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, oh yeah, too bad. One of the times I was up visiting my buddy in Oregon, uh, I stumbled into an Antifa Proud Boys like, you know, devastation moment going on. <laughs> and uh, you know, you look on the internet, and it's just like they make it seem like the whole city's on fucking fire, and everything is just in chaos. And it was literally in the middle of a farmer's market. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like I was like, oh, that's nice. Oh, this is some fresh food, and all those ne hey, my, hey, my necklaces are great. And uh, and then like I cross the street, and it's like fuck you and fuck everybody. And I'm just like, what's happening right now? Like I'm <laughs> way too high for this shit. And. Uh, <laughs> And it was just this tiny little section, you know, it wasn't even an entire block or anything. It was just like the parking lot of like a federal building. And it's just, you know, maybe 50 yards that way, 50 yards that way. And then I walk across the street, can't even hear them anymore. You can't even tell they're there. And I'm watching some fucking country band and eating some ice cream or something. And it's just like, it was yeah. just like a quick moment of my stroll through Oregon. <laughs> but you look yeah, on the yeah. internet. And it's just it's, like, it's, Oregon's on fire, and everything's it's, chaos. It's, and it's yeah, like, they didn't even... Like, Holy shit, that was intense. You want to get a voodoo donut? Yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't stop the farmer's market or anything, and they were directly across the street from both sides of it, you know? And, uh, and yeah, it's fucking internet just over-exaggerates everything to the point of total chaos and disruption. So, yeah, it's... Uh, you can't believe what you see on that book of face. It's all lies, right. I tell you. If it bleeds, it leads, right? Yep, that's it. That is yeah, it, man. I still remember a story. My uncle, who's uh, he worked for a, or I think he still does, works for a, a TV station in Australia, and and uh, he had a story once that he was going to cover the opening of a park. It was like just you know a nice park in this nice community, and he kind of had this hotshot reporter that was his uh, that he was filming, and the guy decided to turn the story rather than it being the grand opening of a a park and a playground. It was like. This is now a new hot spot for potential predators. You know, keep your oh, keep an eye on your children and stuff like that. Because it was just a way more interesting story in his mind. It's like it's oh, it's yeah. a park. Yeah, it's a, a new park opened. Playground for kids. You're like, you know, but that was a boring story in this guy's mind, and oh, he had boring. to make his mark as a journalist. You know, so he decided to give it this spin. And my uncle, like, he almost. He, he tried to fight not to film it, and he's like, I don't, I'm not going to do that. And it basically kind of came down to where essentially it was like, I think he kind of had to do it to keep his job kind of thing, or at least it was going to be a pretty big black mark on him if he didn't. So, Yeah, that's what they do. They want, they want the story. They want it as big and as elaborate as possible, and it doesn't matter who they hurt or who they lie to or how much disruption they cause. It's It's all about ratings, and now it's all about what likes and views and how many people clicked on your link. You know, and it's just like I'm. You're just completely, blatantly lying to everybody, but it doesn't matter. It gets you cl clicks. Yeah, you're getting, That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's the game that the that the world has turned into. Life uh, has turned into that game, and they make you follow that game. 
They try you know, really like, hard. They try really hard to. Yeah. They force I don't know, it on you. Up. We try not to spend a lot of time on social media, but you know, in some jobs you just actually have to. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Speaking of social media, check out, you know, I need to do a <laughs> Yeah, actually. Look at I got you guys' social media <laughs> stuff pulled up right <laughs> here. Hang on, I'm do a little blast for you. We got Stars Unhinged on Facebook. And they have, uh, so it's Stars Unhinged or Facebook.com slash Stars Unhinged and Twitter dot com slash stars unhinged and uh, where did the instagram one go that's not the right thing hang on i can go to your website here which is stars unhinged dot com and click instagram and it'll take me to instagram dot com slash stars unhinged uh, you guys got it you guys got it all straight across got the it. board got it fresh oh, no. i love <laughs> it i love yeah. it got it like you said gotta play the game Gotta and party. our next single is going to kick you in the teeth, right? <laughs> yeah. that, uh, That's right. That's right. That's it's, awesome. it's such a, it's a really weird time. Is Do you release all your music? Do you not release it? Do you put a little bit of it out? Yes, you want to get your music out and you want to do stuff, but it's almost, um, I don't know, It's you put something out and there's so much more going on in the world right now that by the time maybe the world gets a little bit back to normal, you should probably have another album out and ready to go. Yeah. So it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a struggle, but uh, we figure people have been asking for it. They want to hear it. So that's why we put out Fall in Line, and we're just going to just keep putting out more and more singles all the time, and hopefully hopefully things open up and we can get out and play some shows. That's with the way I'm waiting the for. Is, yeah, with the way the internet is, you know, you can't, you can't, you're not making money off of sales and streams don't really pay well and all that. So really the only thing you had left was to release music, spread the word, use that just as like a poster that you'd shove on the side of a, you know, fucking bus stop and then go out and play to make your money. And when you can actually can't do that, it's a, it's a bit of a tough game trying to figure, but I, the only, um, the only thing is that everybody's in the same boat right now. So yeah. at least it's a level playing field, a shitty level playing field, but at least it is level at the moment. Yeah, it's it's really rough, man. And uh, like I was saying, I, I have some some hopefully dates in January. So it, we're, we're fingers crossed those don't get canceled as well because, I mean, as I've been saying that forever, right? I had dates in, dates in November and those are canceled. I had dates in December and those are canceled. Um, and now they're booking fresh stuff for January. Um, so hopefully these venues start actually opening up and allowing people into play. Um, uh, one of the things that, uh, is promising is like, uh, the win, their venue is installing a COVID testing facility. So if you get tickets to the concert wow. and you show up the day of the concert, you get tested for COVID on site. And then if you pass the test, right, you can go into the, into the concert. And, and if you don't, they keep everybody that, you know, obviously is positive for COVID out of the concert. Yeah. And so that's one of the things, and I'm sure that was very expensive for them to set up, but it's, it's one of those steps that people are willing to take to get the ball rolling in the right direction again, which is yeah. great, you know, <clears throat> and hopefully we see yeah. stuff like that happening more often. I really think the rapid testing is going to be the best way, like until there's, you know, a vaccine or something like that. I mean, a rapid testing is definitely going to be the best option. Oh yeah. You know, as you know, I've been sort of saying to people, even if you had like a, if they could make the testing readily available, even for like households, you know, it's kind of like you, if you had like an app, you know, everybody typically shows up to the concerts with their their ticket ready on their phone, and they're scanning that, and then you just you know swipe across, and then all of a sudden it's like you're you know I took a clear test, you know, in the last thirty minutes. Beep beep beep. Yep, you're good. Come on in, kind of thing. I mean, that's probably a little ways off. It's probably a very ambitious idea, but. But, but essentially, uh, but they're I doing. I still think, yeah, but like the rapid testing, I think it's the best way for us to get back to some sort of normalcy for sure. Driving yeah. concerts don't seem like fun to me either. No. We've had some of those out here, and it, I, it's fun to play them, but I wouldn't want to sit in my car and watch a band. But no. That's yeah. like I'd rather watch a drive-in movie than watch a concert in my car. Yeah, you for know, me, yeah. half the fun of going to a concert is getting smashed up against a bunch of people and, you know, jumping <laughs> and screaming and, you know, just letting loose, man. You know, it's like yeah. it's that whole experience, that whole massive compilation of energy going on around you from not just the band, sure. but the the actual crowd, man. And yeah. that's yeah. a big part of Definitely the whole experience. Definitely a barrier there. Yeah. yeah it's the, the escape from real life. Yeah, exactly. You know, work and 
job, you know, job and, you know, problems at home or whatever else. And you just come and sweat it out with, you know, a few hundred of your closest stranger friends. Right. <laughs> and, uh, Metal you know, just get crazy. Family. I always love that about metal concerts where shit's getting way out of hand and like a pit opens up over here and a pit opens up over here and it's like the whole crowd's kind of shifting this way and that way and you literally just pick your feet up off the floor and uh, mm -hmm. and your shoulder to shoulder with so many people, it's just going to carry you this way and that wow. way. It's like, oh, you're just part of this being now. You're just this swirling mass of single-celled yeah. organisms that you know we call a crowd and it's like it just does what it's going to do, man. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful yeah. experience. I love that shit so much. And that's the that's the thing I love too is that like you know, political views aside, you know, social ideas or whatever. Like you just go into a venue and everybody's there for the same common goal to just have the best time ever, having you know, an, a unique experience. And that's what I think is so so great about music and why you know I really hope that it's not long before we get back to doing that again because you know it's where everyone comes together and. Just has a good time and spreads was, the love, you know. What was the last concert yeah. that we all saw together? I think it was Seven Dust, right? We went up to the, to the Commodore and caught Seven Dust, right? The three That's of right. us. That's right. Yeah. I yeah. So. Yeah. Seven Dust. Yeah, with uh, Clutch. Yeah, it was probably Seven yeah. Dust Seven Dust and Clutch. Yeah, I think. And then I, I don't know if it was before or after that I saw uh, Shine Down, Shine Down and Papa Roach. I think was probably one of the last things I saw up here. And uh, <clears throat> man, yes. yeah. The kiss, yeah. end of the end of the road tour. I That's saw that right. one for sure. Yeah, yeah. that was amazing. I Vegas too, yeah. Badass. Last My one. wife's first time seeing Kiss. Like I've seen them. Mine too. I've seen them like eight times. I mean, with you know, creatures oh, yeah. of the night, uh, crazy nights, lick it up, animalize, all that shit. And uh, this is, I'm, you know, my wife, we've been married for like 12 years, and I'm always going on about, you know, Kiss everything. So I finally said, hey. They're coming. I got tickets, and she sat there and she watched it and she loved it. Oh, but yeah. I think she also loved looking over and seeing me and all my friends just singing every song, horns up in the air. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I took my girl for a first yes, kiss Paul, concert we as do well. Want that. You to come down here. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a great concert too, man. The, it was the automation they had going on, and uh, the, you know, oh man, it was fantastic, fantastic fucking show. Yeah, so she watched the show, but she actually watched us watch the show a lot, like and just and just laughing and having a great time. Like uh, Frankie, remember when uh, you and me and Nicole and uh, Vinny went to go see Carrot Top? Yeah, yeah. And Nicole, my wife Nicole, she was laughing so hard that Frankie's tapping me and Vinny's tapping Frankie, and we're all three of us are looking at her, laughing, <laughs> wondering if she's actually gonna like, is she gonna choke? And she's like. <laughs> to come for air. <laughs> it's like so, it was the same thing for her watching us watch the kiss show. Uh, yeah, the crowd. I told you. I told you she'd like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. need to. I, I'm just so ready to go to a concert. I mean, I played two social distance shows in Toronto last month, but it's just good to play, and it's good to travel and to you know hang out and stuff. But I want to go to a concert. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had a, we had tickets for every single month lined up when the COVID happened, man. All the way through oh, the yeah. summer, and we were just like, man. And we just slowly watched them get canceled and canceled and canceled. Yeah. It was very disappointing. Great shows too. We had lined up, man. We had tickets to see Letterkenny, and really? oh man, yeah. Letterkenny's Letter Kenny great. Live. Yeah, Those that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Some more Canadian uh, comedians that I love. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if Hopefully. people haven't seen that show, you got to check that out for sure. Yeah. Hopefully we get back to it, you know, for everybody's sake, like not only, you know, us musicians, I just, I think of all of the crew and all the techs and all the, you know, the caterers and all that. I, so many of them are friends of mine and it's, 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 it's a, it's a real deal. It's oh, yeah. this cartage companies, there's, you know, backline companies, there's places that are just like decimated. Like that's all they do. Yeah. That's, all, all that's like more than half unemployment around. right now is all production yeah. people and uh, yeah. and people that, that cater to the production industry. It's like the majority of that PUA that's going on right now. And then, and the problem that on top of that is the PUA can't get their head out of their own ass. And oh, like yeah. most of us don't have, I don't, I still haven't gotten unemployment and most of the people I know still have not gotten unemployment from them. And so um, it's just devastating everybody entirely. It's just brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. 
Yeah, you say that their rent prices have gone up in Vegas. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Really? I don't think how that happened. Well, it's because, it's because of California, man. Like, everybody is running like hell from the disaster that is the state of California. Yeah. They've just it's, shit all over their own people, and, they, you know, it's, right. they, don't give, they don't care about the homeless problem that's happening. Yeah. And, uh, which I guess is one of the good things that has happened with the, you know, the election results is maybe they'll fucking do their jobs. You know, yeah, instead that's of trying right. to get Trump out of office, it's like maybe they'll yeah. go do their jobs and take care of their people because just waves of people are coming out of California and they're coming into Nevada and Arizona Nevada and states like that. Yeah. Supply and demand. Yeah. And so your, your lease your lease comes up and they're like, Well, this guy's here, he's used to paying two thousand dollars a month here. I'm only charging you six. Sorry, dude, you're out. <laughs> yeah. And, and didn't that, I hear something about California's trying to implement like some sort of like a, a legacy tax thing? Like essentially like even once you've left, you know, you're still entitled to paying California based on your yeah. income or whatever it is for like up to 10 years. Oh yeah. They're pulling that like, bullshit that's on just people, man. Crazy. To me. All my friends like, have been seeing Gene Simmons up in Whistler. Cause I guess he's just spending almost all his time up here now. Oh really? Oh, really? And yeah. So he's up, uh, which is, you know, two hours away from Vancouver up North, I guess. And he's up there all the time. And uh, isn't he building a place in Washington? Nikki Six is in Wisconsin. It's like, you know, the Exodus, the California. Chico, you have to, you have yeah. to go up and pay. Hey, Gene, a visit up in Whistler and ask for some of that uh, slot machine money back. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to give him 20 bucks and said, I never went to Vegas this year. Here's my membership fee for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Lee moved to Vegas, I heard. Hey, Jason. Oh, did he? That's yeah, fun. Tommy a Lee's a blast. Ago, he's living in Vegas now. I got to work with him one time, and he is a gigantic little kid. He is like, <laughs> I, yeah. he reminds me of like, a nine-year-old that's just ate way too much sugar, man. Like, I wish yeah, I was that happy all the time. That dude is so much fun to be around. Yeah. He's a fucking blast. Well, I guess he's going to stay in the country now, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, gonna, yeah. He's not going yeah, to move enough. to Canada. Right? Nobody ever follows through with that shit anyways. Yeah. Everyone always says that. And then we're like, what are you still doing here, bitching? I thought you were going to move yeah. four years ago. I thought you were going to move. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, fucking mess, man. says that. Until they realize how how difficult immigration actually is. Oh, dude, it's no <laughs> joke. The mountains of paperwork and shit you go through. Becoming or an that expat, in Vancouver has for a passport. Yeah. One point million dollar teardown homes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's one of the ones that get you. Mm-hmm. When Frankie's like, he's looking at places. Hey, how much is that house worth over there? I was like, probably two, three million dollars. He's like, what? Oh, yeah. my four places in Vegas are that a lot nicer than that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how that market money, can yeah. keep rising, honestly. Yeah. Like it's it's gotta end at some point. And yeah, and they there's no affordable living out there for all these I the last I checked, uh the two thousand nineteen numbers were like over hundred and fifty thousand homeless people in California alone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've and, heard that like you drive down to Venice or something and there's just like mile after mile of tents set yeah. up and stuff and it's just like it's just crazy to me. It's gross, man, and it's like they doesn't seem like they care. You know, yeah. which is just a shame. I mean, admittedly, we do have a little bit of that problem in Vancouver. We've got like there's this one park in particular that's sort of been overrun. It looks like a you know like Coachella campsite. Oh wow! You know, it's just tents everywhere set up, and and that and it's it's definitely one of those things that you know in our local you know local government and stuff is always kind of a the hot button topic for us is like what's what are we going to do with the homeless problem here and so we have it a little bit here. I mean, it's, you know, not quite to the extent of miles and miles of tents, but there's definitely a bit of an issue here. I mean, yeah, Canada you know, takes care of had... people a little more than America does. <laughs> you they have, have closed down the hotels. They have closed yeah. down hotels and turned them, uh, yeah. turned them into, you know, good housing no, for yeah. people. The thing is, a lot of people were living on the streets and they said if you want to get off the streets we have a place for you there's a difference between not having a place and there's a difference between some people saying i don't want to live in your you know crappy hotel turn something i like where i'm at yeah. at least they have the choice here to you know to not accept something yeah, yeah. that was one of the th- crazy things that happened out here in vegas is they made it illegal uh they made it illegal to sit on the sidewalk you know like you can't mm-hmm. you can't just hang out on the sidewalk and you know it's like or be homeless anywhere in vegas it's it's wow it's a law written into effect you know so yeah. that at least so it, no hanging on the stoop with the boys no hanging yeah. on the stoop waiting <laughs> on a friend at your... <laughs> right 
it's it's crazy man it's becoming a big issue though man and and uh yeah i, I wish uh hopefully we see somebody do something about it you know with the regime yeah. change and in Washington, you know, hopefully they go like, oh, we're actually going to do something about this problem. I, I doubt it. They never really do. Right. They yeah. say they will until they get into office and then that doesn't actually yeah. occur. But, you know, it's getting to but be really, really crazy. every time there's a change, yeah. every time there's a change, no matter which side the change is, every time there's a change, at least there's another little hope. Right. So, yeah. you know, and maybe somebody is passionate about this one thing. And even if that's all they accomplish, at least at least that's something. Yeah. So, we, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully something happens with it because it's been yeah. getting scary, man. It's, it's got to be terrifying and to uh, to be a resident of California. And I mean, I, like I said, I go down there for work and they they tax me, too. When I go to there to work, they they hit me with state tax. So I have to file California state taxes just to fly in there and set up equipment. And, uh, and they come after me too, man. Like they That's sent me crazy. a letter just recently, like in the middle of COVID saying, you still owe us like 30 bucks because we decided that, you know, the money you already paid us wasn't oh. enough. And it's just like, dude, fucking yeah. do something with the money at least. That's right. Where's <laughs> yeah. that money going? Where's it going? Yeah. I think that's that's probably what people's biggest issue is in my, you know, at least from what I've experienced with conversations with people is like, you know, generally people, you know, they don't like paying too much in tax, but are somewhat okay with it as long as they know it's being spent responsibly and they can actually reap the benefits of those, you know, those tax dollars that they're spending. Yeah. And that's, that's where I think the biggest issues come. It's just like, you know. Yeah, what, you guys can see you know, it in not, Canada. Not seeing the benefits of it. Yeah, like you guys have socialized med medicine and all kinds of great uh, social programs going on that like you see your tax dollars at work constantly, man. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's still not perfect, but it's, no. yeah, I mean, in comparison, there's there's certainly, yeah. you, you definitely see the benefits of it for sure. I think they're held more accountable also. People yeah. will, where's this money and how much of it went to this and why are you spending it here? And we have this problem. And you know, and a lot of them say, you know, well, I'm sorry, well, let's allocate some money to this. It's not just this hidden thing that goes away and there's just hundreds of thousands of homeless people and, you know, the taxes are going up. Things actually do get done. Yeah. You know, like as yeah. JB said, it could be better, but at least you can see yeah. things happening. There is no perfect system, right? Like utopia. There is, it, it'll never be a perfect system. It doesn't system. exist, no. but it's like, you know, it's nice to see people doing it. I think the complacency comes into place in like America where, we uh we just go well of course everyone's just corrupt and, and and embezzling all this tax money and like that's just the way the system works right there's nothing we can do about it and and they just kind of accept that no one's really going to care about them or take care of them and yeah i think we saw a big wave of people that are just coming of age and waking up to that and be just totally fucking outraged by the reality that is this this devastated american system man so yeah. I'm, I'm hoping some change really does come from uh, all this, man. You know, we we could use it right about now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking eight hundred dollar like stimulus check isn't really cutting it. Yeah. 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 And it's and it's gonna still, you know, like you said, it's gonna come down to, you know, what are you know, it's not gonna be monumental change, but you know, what are what are gonna be the the little nuggets of of something that happens? What's you know, where are these, you know, new ideas gonna come from and and, you know, again, it's, it's not like the country's suddenly going to be, you know, flipped upside down and, and completely changed, you know, one way or the other. But there's going to be, you know, hopefully some steady progress and, and uh, you know, things moving in the right direction. Because, you know, again, even us up in Canada, as, you know, as much as we are very much a different country, you know, we, we do still share a border. And, and so a lot, of, a lot of policies and things that take place in the United States do affect Canada, you know, even with our trade and, and all that kind of thing. So, um, so that's one of the reasons why we, we do sort of keep a little bit of an eye on, on the things that are happening south of the border. Oh yeah. It, it does ultimately affect us. And, and again, even these things like, you know, with the border closures and stuff like that, you know, because of COVID, I mean, that's, that's also playing a part in, in industry for us. I mean, you know, I, I, uh, as I said, my other gig is working in the film industry and, you know, we were very, uh, I am lucky enough to actually be back working now, but under, you know, very strict protocols and I'm getting tested three times a week and, oh, wow. and, and, 
and uh, but you know it was it was a long slow process of getting us back to work because you know obviously a lot of our cast and a lot of our directors and people who come come to work are, are having to come across the border and quarantine and all these kind of things so you know any any sort of positive you know progressive movement you know and I, I say progressive not necessarily meaning you know an alignment one way or the other but just moving forward is is uh you know we'll see what happens you know let's let, let's let's all kind of cross our fingers and hope that that some positive comes out of this change and yeah you know that's all we can hope you gotta for, come man. visit us jason when, you, when the borders are open i would love Absolutely. to i love canada man come get some poutine man yeah, yeah dude. poutine I and sushi will. I, yeah. That sounds great, man. That sounds really great. And you know what? I think that's a great, great point to wrap it up in. We've been talking for like two hours now, and that's it. Just goes by so fast, man. You guys have been phenomenal, phenomenal Thanks, guests, man. So you thanks know, for having us, dude. Thank Absolutely. you so much thank for being you, on. Yeah, man. our pleasure. I really appreciate and we'll, it. We'll definitely come down. I want to. I want to come check out a Raiders game. I know, right? I do too, man. I'm. I'm I've never yeah. seen a professional football game, man. I gotta go check yeah. that shit out. And I, and I say that as a 49ers fan. Oh, <laughs> nice. Me too, bro. Oh. Niners. You're a Niners fan. Yes, yeah, I was born in California, man. I was a Niners fan right before on. I was even born. You know. Right on. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get to see it, what we get a game every four years at the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> Fucking AFC <laughs> had to move in. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing we've got. Uh, we've got the division rival right close to us here in Seattle. So I've I've actually been down and, and seen a game in Seattle. It was a couple of seasons ago now, but oh, those are always good but, games uh, too against the Seahawks. Yeah. I've been to one one game in Detroit. Lions and the Rams. I saw play. Oh, nice! All right. at the Ford Field. Yeah, that's weird though because you're inside. It's like you know an indoor stadium. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be outside, but uh, it was fun. It was cool. Well, nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. We'll have to go see a Raiders game whenever things open back up. I think that sounds like a lot yeah. of fun. So, uh, well, let me do uh, let me do the little wrap up here. We got uh, we got the stars unhinged. Starsunhinged dot com, Instagram dot com slash starsunhinged, Facebook dot com slash starsunhinged, Twitter dot com slash starsunhinged, and they also have a YouTube page. You can follow the link uh, down below. We will have all those links hooked up. You guys have been phenomenal, man. And uh, you take it easy. This has been Thank uh, you, Jason. Uh, to the Thanks fullest. Thanks so much, brother. With Jason Peace, Trover. brother. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.